Yeah, it kind of feels like a two-team race in the NBA. It was a two-time Masters champion who took home the green jacket and two wins for the Padres up in LA wow. at the Ravine. Wow. Welcome in and happy Monday to those who celebrate Big Rich TD and Fletch with you on this Monday morning. A lot to celebrate, a lot to talk about. Busy sports weekend. And you got to start with the start, the Padres showing some serious fight early this season, especially against their NL West foes, the Dodgers. So they split the series out in Seoul, South Korea, and then their next bite at the apple up in LA, they uh, not only do they beat up on the Dodgers, but they actually like they fought them. They they actually fought. There was a Hell benches yeah. clearing incident. I wish there were punches thrown. <laughs> yeah, I know that was a letdown. Yeah, I wanted bit. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was I, just peacocking. It's just a lot of yeah, yeah. like shouting and finger pointing <laughs> and. I'll I'll kill you. Do that. I said that. I'll kill you. The interesting thing actually happened after that game when David Vassay got his claws into some stuff. We'll get into that a little later. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. David Vassay. David. He Vassay. might be on the show tomorrow. Oh good, 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 good. We need to talk to him. Do a little peacocking of our own. I texted him last night, but it was just he didn't want to come on today. Yeah, of course he didn't. Let let mm. the uh, let mm. the streets quiet down for a minute. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Things yeah. got to simmer. But how about the Padres, man? So if you're a fan of this team, we were just talking about this before the show started, TD and I, like it's basically the reverse Peter Pan. Like if you think happy thoughts, bad things are going to happen. That's right. That's right. Like, like, so it's the, it's the reverse Peter Pan. All you got to do to get Padres victories is just think terrible thoughts. <laughs> just be like, this is not going to go well. Team's going to disappoint me. <laughs> Team's going to let wow. me down. <laughs> And then they go and they do that. The Padres do a lot better on the even years. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I mean, there's something yeah. to this. The COVID year 2020, right? They were pretty good, right? 2022, 20, they go to an NLCS. What? 2023, disaster. <laughs> 2024, disaster. I tell you what, this team looks like a lot of fun. Well, look, well, the 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 biggest difference uh, from last season is we and again we talk about PTSD from last season because this was supposed to be an amazing team and it just didn't work out but the fight in the team last season if the Padres got down it was over yes. and now I mean there have been a handful of games that they have fought back from being down and being down pretty big and so now you look back to a week ago last Monday's game when they were down by eight runs and we kind of joked about it, kind of half joked, I guess, of is this a turning point in the season? <laughs> yeah, it might be. Well, I mean, I'm not going to put it past a team, especially a team as young as the Padres, who are counting on some guys in some spots of great importance. They can become inspired a little bit easier. You know, I, I mean, look, even Fernando Tatis Jr. can be characterized still as a young player. It's it's but the Jackson Merrill's, the Tatis Juniors, you know, the guys who are relatively new to this franchise shoot Mike Schilt, even though he's a longtime manager in this game, it's his first year wearing the manager's costume in the dugout with the Padres. So there's a lot of new here. So they they do need some of these relevant, important experiences, especially against rivals it, it, to, to encourage them to play better than they did a year ago. And so far, early returns on the season, they've got a handful of them, like you pointed out. Right. Now they're nine and nine. It's not like they're blowing the doors off of anything, but there's so many more Padre positives so far this season than last season. Yeah. And and the, the beautiful thing is they've got some real guts. It feels mm -hmm. like this team isn't going to lay down for anybody. There isn't that feeling which unfortunately, look, it, it was later in the season where this all happened, but unfortunately Juan Soto got painted with the brush that he's the guy who's given up because his name was attached to it, but you could see it. It wasn't just Juan Soto. He may have been the only person who was honest about it, but there were times where it just felt like this team collectively just were like, ah, it's a game we could lose. Screw it. Yeah. We'll save ourselves. Ah, it's a random night in Seattle. Who cares? Who's watching? And it's like, no, no, no. All these games are important because any one of them can sneak you into the postseason when you get down the wire, and that's exactly what it was. It was a couple of games here or there that if the Padres would have won instead of lost, they could have made it in into uh, into the postseason as a wild card. Well, there was a little bit of feeling last season, at least to me, that it was like the Padres felt like, ah, we'll we'll get it tomorrow. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll make it up over the weekend. Yeah, uh, and they never could. 
And so it was, it, it kept getting pushed, kept getting pushed. It's kind of that feeling of, you know, procrastination at your house of, ah, I'll mow the lawn tomorrow. Ah, it'll be, it'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, fix it, fix it tomorrow. Yeah, up, and then yeah. something comes up and then you keep getting pushed back. And that's what happened. And I mean, even though they had a winning record last year, I've said this many times, that did not feel like a winning season. It was garbage time wins late in the year. I think the biggest thing that's impressed me about this team, and especially this weekend, yeah, it's the fight. It's the young guy. Uh, Jackson Merrill was the one who came up big on Friday night. Jerks and Profar yesterday, uh, who's irrelevant, right? But um, anyways, this team also has a bullpen that's been able to shut down the Dodgers late in games. Like on Friday night, they needed a couple innings out of the bullpen to put up zero runs. That's exactly what they did yesterday. They needed a couple innings for the bullpen to shut down the Dodgers. That's exactly what they did. So all the big question marks coming into this year, how's Jackson Merrill going to perform as a 20-year-old, get in his first bite at the big league apple? All these questions about left field, Jerks and Profar has been incredible. And then the questions about the bullpen, like they've had some hiccups, but for the most part, the bullpen's won them some games. A genius move by A.J. Preller absolutely blowing last season. Mm. So that way it gives now the teams <laughs> yeah. the feeling this season like, oh, if they get down, they're not coming back. Yeah, uh, And they do. So nicely done. Hats <laughs> off to the Padres and, and A.J. Preller making this happen. And, and honestly, it, he realized that his team was so good, he had to do it himself yeah. by starting a fight with Bob Melvin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And then allowing yeah. him to be traded or or <laughs> Or, uh, relinquish his contract right. with the Padres to sign with the in division <laughs> rival. What what a plan! Look, genius. Guys, it's a lot like last year where I I put a good portion of the blame on AJ Perler, but I said ultimately the guys on the field are the ones who are screwing this up. Like it's the play of your stars that is screwing this up. Last year, this year, it's the guys on the field so far, man. Like Perler went into this season hoping that left field would work out with Jerks and Profar. He went in hoping that Jackson Merrill would be able to step up to the big stage. Like, these are two pretty lucky moves for a general manager that both these guys are playing as well as they are. I mean, uh, Profar's got over a 900 OPS. I mean, he's playing like an all-star right now, and Jackson Merrill is is playing like he, he'll be the NL Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Is, is he batting like 330? He's incredible. Yeah. And he, in clutch situations, he's been stepping up with big RBIs. Like, Jackson Merrill <laughs> is doing things that 20-year-olds should not be able to do. So, speaking of Profar, rewind back to Saturday's game against the Dodgers. Uh, there was an up-and-in pitch he took exception with. Uh, the Dodgers led by one at the time. And I guess everybody in the Dodgers dugout were a little surprised that he was upset about it. You know what I mean? Especially during a pit, uh, a perfect game that was being thrown by uh, Stone, Gavin Stone with the Dodgers. And so all of a sudden, there's just some back and forth talk. And then the incident resulted in the dugouts clearing. And like we were talking about earlier, no punches were thrown. Lame. But these, these players that, I mean, like, you know, they were pissed at each other, which led to a Dodgers victory, which led to, you know, I, a little bit of water being thrown on some of the fire in the fight. You saw it out of the Padres dugout, but then Will Smith ended up on 570, the Dodgers flagship saying that, geez, you know, I didn't think we would even throw at him. He was like, he's kind of irrelevant talking about <laughs> Profar. And then of course it's like, it's like as if this game was written, Profar goes out in the seventh inning and has that, what is it, a two-run double no, off the wall? bases loaded. It was about, duh, duh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But bases two, loaded. Looked like a grand slam, three runs scored. All three, three runs scored. Three the RBI. Bases. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So there you go. I mean, like, it's just, it's it's not scientific. It's emotional. It's not, uh, you know, I mean, these. it's moment to moment, you know, you can't predict what's going to happen in baseball. I guess over the course of a season, you can, you know, certain, certain players, you know, based on how high they're soaring, you know, sometimes they'll level back out or they'll drop back down to earth a little bit, you know, because it's 162 uh, uh, game season, you know, certain players who are great, you know, if they're kind of coasting, you know, at some point they're going to pop, but right now it feels like the Padres are playing. I don't want to say way over their head, but they're playing to a level of expectation that we expected last year, and they're playing this year at that expectation. I, Rich, I'm so glad you brought that up because I had a question that I was going to ask both of you, and this lines it up perfectly. Do you think that this is the best baseball the Padres are able to play with their current team? Like right now, especially that Dodgers series coming off the Cubs series where they won a couple games, they win two games against the Dodgers. Like, is this their peak of this team? Is this is how good they can possibly be? I think that there's still some room for improvement on the pitching side of things. Uh, I, I think that we haven't seen the best of Darvish. We haven't seen the best of Musgrove. So if, you know, tighten those up and 
the the hitting has not been bad. And when the top of the lineup hasn't hit, the bottom of the lineup kind of is made up for things. So then I think last night's game was kind of a reverse. The bottom of the lineup didn't hit well, but uh, Merrill was, was he hitting lead off? He was hitting lead off. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, you know, the, a change in the bottom there. Uh, I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised of how well they play some, some of these games. Now, Again, nine and nine kind of feels about right. So that's the point, right? If they're playing their best baseball right now and they're only 500, where do they have to go from here? Right. But that is, uh, to me, they're playing their best baseball right now of this young season, Mm -hmm. but it's only through the past two series. You know, it's a swinging scale. Like, I definitely think they were underachieving earlier this year, and now they're finally starting to put together some of some of what what is going to make them potentially a special team. You know, it was an important home series win against the Cubs, followed by an equally, if not more important, road series win against the Dodgers. Now they go on the road to Milwaukee to face another NL opponent. It it, it just feels like they're starting to stack up some positivity. They're heading in the right direction. Whereas start of the season before the Cubs series, it just kind of felt like, okay, a little bit of good there. Okay. Now a little bit of bad there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very, very nice. Oh no. Yeah. That reminds me of last year. Oh, that's different. That's the same. Like, you know, so it was kind of up and down. I was saying last week, end of last week, you know, the one thing, the takeaway from the season so far with the Padres is consistently inconsistent. Yeah. I mean, that's, wildly accurate with that uh i don't know last season did they win any series against the dodgers they go over they may have gone over i don't if, know if they, didn't go, if they didn't go over i think they got like one so it's kind of nice to start this out here they have not lost a series to the dodgers yet that's true yeah they they they're square on the one in seoul south korea and they're game up now after that win in this series in la but that's the confidence boost yeah oh 100 percent when you can quote unquote, to use Peter Seidler's term, slay the dragon up the freeway from you. And you can do that consistently. It it almost like record be damned. Like that's, that's huge Mm -hmm. for this team. So now you got a three game set with the Brewers. Brewers are 10 and four here on this young season. They've been playing really good baseball, but they've been beating, I don't know, not the best teams in the world, but 10 and four is 10 and four. Can the Padres keep it going? And there's no letdown when they hit a second road series in a row. That's the first time we've seen them do that this year. There's a few different things at play here, but I would like to see the Padres go out there. You get Musgrove and you get Cease to start this series. Can you go out there and keep that performance high, not based on all the emotions that came with this past weekend? Hopefully for Joe Musgrove, getting away from home helps him because he he hasn't looked quite right this season. Dylan Cease has been very consistent Curious to see if that keeps up, but but yeah, a little positive momentum here. And to be honest, I think the beginning of the season hurt the Padres, maybe worse than the Dodgers. The fact that they were in South Korea. We talked about this that week they were coming back, and then they had the memorial for Peter Seidler, very emotional, and then they had a couple exhibition games they still had to play before opening day at Petco Park, which was also very emotional with, you know, all the Peter Seidler Memorial services there, you know, for Padres fans, it was, it was a whirlwind to start the season. I feel like sometimes when you're experiencing that you get, you're like catching up to the regular season, as opposed to being ready and like taking the on-ramp like the rest of the teams. Hey, by the way, we were talking about that, but how about we listen to it? That pro far hit the bases clearing double that resulted in the Padres victory yesterday over the Dodgers. Now they were able to sustain the lead and win the game, but it all started here in the seventh with Profar. So Mike Schultz says, I can tell you this, Profar is very relevant to us. He's a glue guy. Uh, Guy's got 10 years in the big leagues. There's relevancy there. Did a nice job tonight with that three-run double. But beyond that, pro's a pro. He's a big part of the San Diego Padres. He's very relevant to me. I believe completely that he's very relevant to his teammates. So we respect and appreciate him highly. So he mentioned the word relevance or relevant four times in about eight (laughs) sentences. Manny Machado did the exact same thing when Kevin Acey caught up with him post game. Can't wait to talk to Kevin on Wednesday because he was able to talk to a lot of people in the Padres clubhouse and getting to understand 
not the stuff that was recorded necessarily, but everything else that Kevin heard, I want to see how much exception they actually took to Will Smith's comments. Because mm-hmm. I think it was actually a bigger deal in that Padres clubhouse than it was to Eva Padres' Twitter, which was at an all-time high this past weekend. What was, what was class, Sorry, what was classy about Profar was he was mic'd up for the next game, and he like admitted, like, oh, yeah, Stone wasn't really trying to throw at me. Just kind of let go of one. Well, it was When you're squaring around a bunt and one comes high and tight like that, you're in a very vulnerable position. And the reason why I say he's classy is because, you know, he had an opportunity to, you know, sort of bark back at right. Will Smith and he decided not to do it. So he didn't take the bait. And and I think the broadcasters did what they were supposed mm. to do, asking him, yeah. hey, so what did you think about yeah. Smith's comments <laughs> I, after the game? I, if it were me, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to bark back either. Yeah. Just because, man, if it goes sour, God, that looks that looks bad. Yeah, and, then, and then now you give the Dodgers fuel. Yeah, yeah, you well, strike yeah. out like four times yeah, in the yeah, game. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, well, I guess we should have done that. Yeah. Profar did the absolute opposite of the Ben Fletcher move, which is talking a bunch of smack <laughs> leading into something and then underperforming. <laughs> Jerks and Profar took the high road and then outperformed his norm and was able to have the game-winning hit for the Padres. It's very cool when you see the humble guy end up just letting his play do the talk. And yeah. that's exactly what Profar did. Manny had a homer yesterday, had one Friday. He is 22 away from being the Padres' all-time leader. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. happen. It's going to happen this season. Yeah, it's going to happen this season. Maybe. That's a lot. We'll see. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Sorry. At one point, Gary Sanchez last year was also going to set the franchise record. So well, let's, let's listen, the listen, breaks. listen. You mean codenamed Scorpio? That's Scorpio. The one. They, According decided, to this show, they decided they decided we're not going to play him every game. Yeah, Weird. That, not our dumb fault. move. That seems like their fault. Yeah. Um, all right, we got a quick halftime coming up in just a minute here. We also have a pair of tickets to Lakeside Rodeo. That's going to be Thursday, April 25th. Whoa! Through the weekend, through Sunday, April 28th, we got a pair of tickets to see Indoor Football League San Diego Strike Force. So we'll get you going with that. But first, this. Well, those dirty little friars, they uh, won two out of three in L.A. over the weekend. Lots of fight videos coming out from the stands. Have you guys seen these? Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, All always. of them Dodger Blue. What, oh, that started the fights the fighting with each other wow. yeah like there's i saw a video after video of dodger fans punching each other in the face aj preller should have <laughs> like plaques made every single time the padres hit a home run out there in dodger just stadium and just send keep them. sending them <laughs> there were so after that story kind of went viral last week there were lots of dodger fans posting pictures next to the fernando tatis jr plaque saying dodgers what the f why do we have this and i agree i don't know why yeah I don't know why but last night jerks and profar he was the hero late in the game <laughs> hit a bases loaded double that gave the padres a 6-3 lead bullpen would hold the dodgers padres win the finale 6-3 now they're heading to milwaukee they got three against the brew crew in golf scotty scheffler walks away with the masters he wins by four strokes finishing at 11 under par and in the nba the play-in tournament begins tomorrow guys we're in the playoffs yeah somehow it, yeah. some it's I happening mean, i mean the playoffs don't finish till june but here on april 16th we're gonna get our first playoff game 41 games yesterday yeah well lakers, i had to write them all down i'm sure you did a great job <laughs> lakers get the pelicans warriors get the kings that's the western play-ins and on wednesday night heat take on the sixers hawks get the bulls and that's on the eastern side and you guys watch any of the UFC this weekend? Oh my gosh, I saw highlights. Holy when, crap! When Holloway took down Gagey with a second remaining. Okay, so if I can set up go, the story go, go real ahead. quick, that was so that, unbelievable. That fight, Max Holloway was winning the entire time. He was the underdog coming in, but he stunned uh, Gagey early in the first round. Actually, broke his nose really early on in the fight. So Gagey was pouring blood from the beginning. And then it gets to the later rounds, and it's like Gaethje was just trying to stay alive, finish the fight, right? Mm-hmm. He's probably going to lose, but he was just trying to stay in there. And at the last 10 seconds, Max Holloway pointed to the center of the ring and said, come on out here. This isn't how we're finishing this fight. And then they started raining hell on each other, just throwing punch after punch <laughs> after punch, giving it all they could in the last 10 seconds of this fight. And then at one point, Gaethje actually got him pretty clean. Oh, yeah, he, he caught him. And so Holloway's like sort of crouched down and just throws an overhand and knocks Gaethje out cold. He falls flat on his face. One of the greatest knockouts in UFC history. You can hear mm-hmm. Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier and the other guy screaming their heads off because they just saw literally history. And then after the fight, Dana White's at the press conference, and I, I'll play the audio in a second, but the the thought that he had was i sell holy s moments for a living and that was the biggest one i've sold hmm. yeah I, I watched it i watched it and it uh i don't know man it's unnerving to me 
And, and the the violence of this. I don't know why I get like half of me is kind of like, oh God, I feel bad. I get Can it. Can I tell you something that gets you a little more excited? What's Do you that? know what the name of the belt that Max Holloway won with that fight is? The BMF? The bad mother. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Like the UFC, which is a professional sport yeah. in America, has a championship <laughs> that's called the BMF. No, no, it's cool. And look, they're doing it right. Uh, and, and they're they're playing to their audience. And I dig all that. And I, I love the fanfare of it. But I don't know, man. That's a golly. Yeah. Oh, it got its hooks in me in COVID, and I'm never going back. It, I love that. It was sport. a great finish. It was great, and I mean, and it's a you know landmark moment for the UFC. UFC 300. They wanted to yeah. make it a huge yeah. card. Three championship fights. That was the first one. Yeah. Like the <laughs> adrenaline dump after that one. It was tough to even focus on the next two. Yeah, I can't even believe what we watched, but it was incredible. Here's Dana White, commissioner of the UFC, after the fight night. Here's what he had to say. <laughs> yeah and there, there are moments i mean look there are moments in sports where you say that collectively and you know everybody else is too a great catch uh, an incredible knockout in boxing or UFC mixed martial mixed martial arts, but Jake Cronenworth in the NLCS a mm, few years ago. Profar with the seventh inning yeah. blast. Like you know, there are times where you just got. You, I mean, you're like, what did we just watch? The like, interception on the goal line, Malcolm Butler against, against the uh, Russell Seattle Wilson. Seahawks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, that, there are those moments, and that was certainly one of those memorable moments. Yeah, and, and how I could tell that that was one of those moments is. There was no reaction other than jaws dropped just in screaming. my house. Yeah, well, it wasn't even screaming. Like it was almost silent as it happened because it was like the processing time of. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So there was a second left. True story. Kendall was asleep on the couch when that happened, and Brock the dog was cuddled up right next to her when that happened. And me sitting, I was so locked into these fights because I had prize picks going and everything. And then me, as soon as Holloway dropped that punch, I was holy. <laughs> just scream and then both of them jump up out of the couch <laughs> that's awesome man i did that uh on the ninth hole with scheffler's uh scheffler's hit yesterday oh and, uh the, the one that was like an inch away from going in yeah yeah, yeah that was sick it's it's yeah. it's incredible golf in a completely different way can deliver those moments and Actually, that my morning monologue is going to be about something that we all witnessed this weekend, and it was away from the top of the leaderboard. It was definitely toward the bottom. We'll get to that later on. Um, also, we we got to talk a little Masters. Uh, I, Scotty Scheffler, two-time Masters champ. Just cruised. The fourth youngest to ever do that uh, more than once, so we'll get into all that. Um, and, but you mentioned UFC. We got to mention this before we go away for the break here. Conor McGregor is coming back. That was also announced oh, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. 303. So, the, so we got two more huge cards before then. The biggest name in the sport is going to return. Do you, do you feel like he's going to get his ass kicked? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel as well. He hasn't won in like three years. Michael Chandler is a freaking beast. Well, like, yeah. good luck, Conor. And I mean, look at the machines that these guys are. And they're a machine because they are doing it day in and day out. So I feel like if you took just a little time off, it's hard to get back to that. Well, and he's also, he, you forget how much fighters learn from each other. So there's a whole group of fighters who have learned how to do it better because of Conor McGregor right, right. with more confidence, how to defeat certain pros watching some of the fights that he's lost or some of the fights he's won. Like everybody learns from everybody else. So like you said, you take a little time off the sport advances while you're away mm -hmm. shooting Roadhouse with Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal. Awesome movie. I stand by it. <laughs> you know what? I might star in Roadhouse too, boys. I got to work on my six pack a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what did they say? You got to get down to playing weight. I got to get down. Yeah. And, uh, I, once this ankle gets healed up, physical therapy, you know, all that stuff. I, I think I'll be ready for it. And in a large part, that's because of Wayne and Chloe over at SDFatLoss.com, yeah. yeah, who has really trimmed up this show altogether. In fact, I remember August of last year, they, they got together with us and they said, does anyone want to star in Roadhouse? Yeah, they did mention yeah. that. Roadhouse 2. Right, right. Um, and we the said electric no. boogaloo. 
<laughs> we'll be in the trilogy. <laughs> but if you're uh, looking to drop some weight here as we get into the summer months, you got to get on over to sdfatloss.com because I promise you, like, summer is upon us. Like, it's almost here. But you can drop that weight really, really fast, like scary fast, like the three of us did. Within a week, all of us were down 10 pounds because they told us, like, we can't start endorsing them until we've dropped 10 pounds. I think and, all of us were down at least 10 pounds. Oh, yeah. Richie yeah. was close to pushing 15 by yeah. the end of the first right. week. And I was like, he is a liar. He is a liar. And he got on the scale and he was not lying. No, and it's real. You can go back at our social media videos. We showed some of the weight loss journey where we all got on the scale and all three of us were pretty stunned by our numbers as Rich Warnberger was black back to like his playing weight. Travis Dale was so fat. Yeah, I, Me, I was 278 pounds. I didn't even think I was 250, but weight sneaks up on you. And so now I'm really happy when I jump on the scale and I'm down in the low 240s. I, I went to the doctor and they told me, man, if you'd have broken your leg and you weighed 280 pounds like you did, things would have been a lot worse in your recovery. So if you're looking to get a little healthier, if you're looking to look a lot better, get on over to sdfatloss.com today. The consultation is free with Wayne and Chloe. And if you mention Big Rich, TD, and Fletch, you are going to get $200 off. Woo! So if you were delaying this, if you've heard us talking about it and you said, I want to do it, but it's a little expensive, $200 off right now. If you mention Big Rich TD and Fletch, sdfatloss.com. Are we watching a Tiger Woods in the making? We're going to talk a little Masters coming up next.
This update is presented by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Padres won two out of three in L.A. over the weekend. Last night, Jerks and Profar saved the day late in the game. He had a bases-loaded double to take a 6-3 lead. Bullpen would hold the Dodgers. Padres win the finale 6-3. Now they're heading to Milwaukee. They got three against the Brewers. In golf, Scotty Scheffler wins the Masters by four strokes, finishing at 11 under par. We'll be talking about that coming up next. And in the NBA, the play-in tournament is here tomorrow. Lakers got the Pelicans. Warriors get the Kings in the West. On Wednesday night, Heat uh, take on the Sixers, then the Hawks will get the Bulls in the East. Heavy rain can lead to sewer line issues ahead with Anderson's drain specialists. Nobody wows clients like they do, serving over half a million residential clients for more than 45 years. Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. That's AndersonPHA.com. Big Rashidi and Flash of Sandy of Sports 760. It is a Monday. It's tax day, by the way. Your final day to file your taxes or get an extension, I did guess. Did you do them? I did them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did them. It, it wasn't that fun. We got it done early this year. We got some money back. Nice. I did not. I'm sorry. I did not. Yeah, it was unfortunate, uh, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. So we didn't mention it last segment, but the Max Holloway knockout. Yeah. He walked away with a cool 600 grand because of that. Because he said, hey, come back. Let's do this thing. And, uh, yeah, because yeah. he called him to the center of the ring. And I think that was Max's point of doing that because he knew there was a $600,000 bonus for the knockout of the night or whatever. And he definitely wanted to make it clear that he was the knockout of the night. Well, that worked. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. say so. Yeah, 600 grand. The dude? balls you have to have also when you're winning a fight like that. That's the other thing that hasn't been mentioned yet. When you're he could have stalled and won that fight. He yeah. could have literally wa- done ring around the rosy. Well, yeah, for the rest know, of the fight, you just jab, you know, you kind of, you know, you can take someone down, you can control them like there. He gave he gave Justin Gagey an an actual shot to do the same thing to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. And I think the point like <clears throat> earlier in the night, um, it was actually the final prelim was Aljamain Sterling, who is yeah. like pound for pound, one of the best wrestlers and grapplers in the world. And the entire stadium was booing him. Because all he was doing was controlling the fight, like you were saying, Rich. Because he was so much better at grappling than the, his opponent that he could just win the fight by doing nothing. Yeah. And the entire place was booing. So I think Max Holloway saw that and said, I'm not going to make this lame ending to the fight. No, meet me in the middle, bro. That was cool. That was yeah. very cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's courage. And and it's fun. And it's it's looks, oh. we're just talking about Conor McGregor returning. What made Conor great? What made him a star? Should Look, I mean, you can be great and not be a star. But what made Conor McGregor a star was the fact that he was fearless like that. He would call out anyone at any time. He'd make such a scene of all the pre-fight preview stuff. And and then he was good. He backed mm-hmm. it all up. And it's important to be able to back it up. But he would come out with important. flying knees in the first round yeah. with five seconds on the clock. Yeah. Well, Connor was ridiculous. And the reason there's a six hundred thousand dollar bonus attached to that is because Dana White wants to make people happy of what they paid for. I mean, these people are watching gladiators out there. Yeah. They want to see this happen. They want to see it go down. They don't want to see somebody run around the ring and not be uh not be throwing the punches. So Good on him. Yeah. Way to go. You're incentivizing entertainment, which is something that golf really does a good job of with their traditions. I don't think they really have their head wrapped around it completely. Even live golf suffers with this a lot. I think they're trying to make golf cooler, but it's, uh, are they getting the attention they deserve for the effort and the money they're putting into it? Probably not. But the, the majors, they still draw eyes and crowds and people care and we saw uh, Scotty Scheffler, who's young, he's a young man, 27 years old, mm-hmm. win his second green jacket and in impressive form because you got to remember, it's not just what's happening on the golf course. It's also what's happening in the world around these golfers. Scotty Scheffler's wife could have gone into labor at any point from Thursday through Sunday. Right. Walking the course, knowing that a life changing event could potentially be happening at any moment. And he's. He stood by it all the way through until the beginning of his Sunday round. If my wife goes into labor, I'm leaving. That's what he said. I don't know if he actually would have. He had the lead going into Sunday, man. I don't know. I don't think he would have. I, I don't think <laughs> you his, don't think he would have. I don't think his wife would allowed it. I I think I think she probably would have stopped him from doing that. But I guess if you've already won a master, I, I laid out know. the scenario to Kendall, and she said, "You better go get that money because it was three point six million dollars." <laughs> 
And I, even if you come in second or third or fourth, you're still getting a hefty check. So Kendall said, no, you're staying on that golf course. Wow. <laughs> I, I laid it out to Sarah and it wasn't even like I could finish the sentence. You're leaving. Get here. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, no, not even close. Yeah. yeah and well, you guys already own a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Yeah. Well, but the, the other funny thing is, but, but I, but I owe tremendously on that house. This wouldn't have even been a conversation in your lives, though, because by twenty-seven years old, you, you already had a, you already, you already had a set. <laughs> you were like, oh, no, I'm done forever. <laughs> I am done forever. Yeah, um, that's crazy. By the way, I'm I older now than you were when you already had three kids and had a vasectomy yeah and uh <laughs> let's see by 27 i was uh i had owned my third house yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah he was moving they were moving up because the the family but, kept growing yeah. so they needed more space listen, we bought our first house for ninety nine thousand oh. dollars right? that's how old i am yeah. <laughs> which God, is that like even a down old. payment now Right. I mean, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That is a down <laughs> yeah. payment. That's a down payment. I, unless you want to live in a, a shoebox or a dumpster. What's crazy though? I'm only 44. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like it's not like I'm 75 years old or 80 years old looking back of like, oh yeah. Time that charges on awfully quickly. Yes, it does. Um, which uh which really does bring us nicely back to what we were talking about because you know, look, we we've had old pros who have been in this situation before. Jack Nicholas, Steve Ballesteros, um, who else? Uh, oh, Tiger Woods. Before they, but, but I mean, they, those three specifically were younger than Scheffler at the time of winning their second Masters jacket or multiple Masters jackets. But how about Scheffler? Second green jacket, won the players back to back. He's got four majors under his belt now. I mean, this is, he's been number one in the world for 80 weeks and when everyone was falling apart yesterday he was just mr consistent he yep. took his one bogey early on the back nine and then fired two birdies right away after it so it's like scotty scheffler just got in this zone especially in the back nine when homa and morikawa were kind of falling apart and uh, starting to lose ground he just kept gaining and gaining and it was impressive i will say it sucks when the masters is decided by the 12th hole on sunday yeah. and it kind of felt like it was yesterday yeah, yeah it makes the rest of the watching even though he was playing spectacular it makes it tougher to watch. And so I was curious and I went back and looked at the 2019 leaderboard at the finish when Tiger won his last Masters because I remember being so much more locked in and it wasn't just because Tiger was there, but it was because the competition was so great. Let me re read this to you guys. Tiger Woods finished that Masters at 13 under par to win it, right? Three people tied at 12 under par right behind him. Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Xander Shoffley. Like that is a stacked leaderboard. And then you go down. Four more people at 11 under par. Francisco Molinari, Jason Day, Tony Finau, Webb Simpson, and then two more people at 10 under par, Ricky Fowler and John Rahm. All those names are recognizable. All those names outside of Webb Simpson because he has a mustache now, you can put a face to it. Webb Simpson. Yeah. So I, golf is better oh, when you have these stacked Incredible. leaderboards on the final day, and we didn't get that yesterday. And I'm curious to see the ratings. I know Thursday's ratings were higher than they have been since 2015, but a lot of that was the return of Tiger. Yeah, I'm Tiger curious to see if people held on yesterday because I don't think they did. Well, this is the new face of golf. You, the names that you mentioned there, Morikawa, Homa, obviously Scheffler. I mean, this this that's 30 and younger. Yeah, like I mean, this is this is the youth movement in golf. Like Rory McIlroy is getting up there in age. He's not good anymore. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau <laughs> is getting up there in age. I mean, Tiger Woods obviously is way up there uh, from a body clock standpoint. He's like eighty years old. God, there. he was limp and bad. So you look at golf, and this is where it's turning to. You know, you're not relying on Woods and Mickelson. You are still, but. Pretty soon here, those guys are going to be on the senior tour or not playing at all. There's a case to be made, though, and I read an article about this yesterday. I can't remember. It might have been Steve Sand. I don't remember who wrote it, but it was talking about the case that Liv and the PGA Tour merger needs to happen sooner than later because numbers were up for this Masters, but numbers were up because you had the stars from both leagues combined. Yep. Yeah. It's like the PGA Tour does not have enough people on their own right to get big numbers at tournaments right now. So only four times a year we get to see actually the best players in golf together. Because the live golfers were good. Like DeChambeau had the lead after day one. Yep. Like they were, they're plenty good to compete still. I, it's just you wish that they were all combined all the time. Tiger Woods, when you watched him, you would watch him because it would be close. You'd watch him fight, you'd watch him battle, and then you'd watch when he got the lead because you were waiting for something else special to happen. Or maybe he was going to break some record somewhere. Or you, you knew, like, I'm watching greatness right now. I'm not there with Scheffler yet. I mean, it got the whole 12 for me. I turned on the TV in the garage and went and washed cars, and it rained. 
So I kept washing. Wait, and cars washing. You mean like, oh, like wash, 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 washing, yeah. Yeah. watch. No, I thought I you were getting your Michael yeah, McQueen on. Wash cars. I love that movie. <laughs> I love Larry the Cable Guy. God, every single weekend I excuse myself to the garage because of Will, Will Lightning McQueen, Willie Wynn. Honestly, it would have surprised me. <laughs> it actually would have surprised oh, wow. me. Either. I took a tumble, by the way, this weekend, guys. I thought there was an acorn on the ground. Oh, wait, what happened? Yesterday. God, I, going, I wish there would have been. <laughs> I was going to the garage. <laughs> broken leg on this poor guy? Going to the grocery store, walking into Albertsons, and as I stepped up on the curb, one foot didn't quite make it all the way up. As I started tripping, it was like the longest fall in the history of mankind because I was trying to catch myself for about 41 steps. And then finally, I fell to the ground and did some kind of a roll. I looked like a turtle on its back for a How second. How long did it take you to get up? I, I got up immediately, you know, it's that <laughs> adrenaline rush where you pop right up. Yeah. yeah. And then there was, see that? Yeah, there was some woman walking with her husband and they just kind of stared at me. And there was about a three second pause where she goes, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I get to Albertson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people are just tripping <laughs> over themselves to get these strawberry sales. Um, yeah, <laughs> which by the way reminds me, you probably wouldn't have fell at all if you're wearing your art supports from the Good Feet store. Yeah, I didn't, I did not have those in. Well, and, uh, yeah, it was a mistake. You better put in your strengtheners <laughs> or maybe even your relaxers on a nice Sunday stroll at the grocery store. But the Good Feet store's got you covered. Uh, if you want to walk with better balance or run or do anything, just stand there with better balance, better performance in anything you do. And most importantly, for me, Pain relief. My goodness. After an NFL career, my back was a mess. I had a bad knee, a bad hip. I had bad ankles. I had bad everything. My lower body joints were just a mess. And I needed results uh, that actually worked. I needed relief. And so I went to the Good Feet store. And frankly, it was kind of a last ditch effort. And it was one of those recommendations that I didn't really believe was going to help. And it really, really did. So all you do is you go to the Good Feet store. Uh, try before you buy experience. They get you measured and fitted. And then you walk around the store with these arch supports. And if there's any little tweaks that you need, they're really accommodating. They'll switch things out for you. And then once you're satisfied, you walk out of there and you wear these arch supports in your shoes, whatever footwear you use, whether you're on your feet a ton, you're wearing boots for work, or even if you have a desk job and it's just walking back and forth to the photocopier or, you know, going to the grocery store after work, whenever you're on your feet, you don't realize it, but your feet are the foundation for the rest of your body. And it can really impact how your joints feel. And it was for me, my pain started fading away. The lower back feels great now. The knee pain has virtually disappeared. The hip pain has disappeared. So if you're like me and you have lower body joint pain, or even you got pain sneaking up your spine, in, even in your neck, uh, these art supports can really help your posture and they can really correct that as well. So check them out at goodfeet.com. Uh, go get your free try before you buy experience right now. There's a Good Feet store near you. There's over 200 plus in the US and overseas. That's goodfeet.com, goodfeet.com.
Coming up next, he's either a madman or an innovator. Either way, we love it. Yeah, Big Rich, TD, and Fletch with you. We still got those Lakeside Rodeo tickets. We still got the IFL tickets to give to you. That's Indoor Football League's San Diego Strike Force. Yeah. It kind of feels like next, like royalty free next. Mm. Mm. Baby, when we're grinding, <laughs> I get so excited. <laughs> I'm going to lay you down by the fire. Speaking of grinding, do you guys see uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey get a little dirty dancing yeah, on it at Coachella? Was, it yeah. was, it was hot. Not a lot it of room fire. for fire. Not a lot of room for Jesus between yeah. them. <laughs> it's very true. Oh, she did that thing where true. she like reached back and grabbed his neck. Oh wow! Yeah, it was on dirty. It was <laughs> wow. God. Also at Coachella, I don't know if you guys saw Yo Gabba Gabba out there. Mm, the what is Aquabats. Mm. Is Yo Gabba Gabba Fred Flintstone? Oh, yeah, that was Dabba. Dabba. Yeah, you have a Dabba do. Damn it. Yeah. Yo Gabba Gabba was a kid show, I guess, in the early 2000s. Yeah, I guess yeah. it was early 2000s. It was, it was just after like my time watching that. Kind yeah, of, yeah. It was mean, like exactly my time watching those shows. Yeah, yeah you and didn't, I never heard of it. You, didn't, you never saw Yo Gabba Gabba? No. There was like a DJ. Yeah, that's yeah. so weird that you missed it. Yeah, you should have. I mean, like, should have been your jam because Coachella is like your wheelhouse right now. Like, that's my age group. Yeah, oh, there. yeah, for sure. Like, it's all the double income, no kids people who right. go out into the Palm Desert Oof. and get high on ecstasy and just, I don't know, <laughs> grind with each other. I had never had any interest oh, in going. Director Mary was out there. <laughs> yeah, she was at Coachella. <laughs> yeah. Why? Oh, we, we got probably to take an ecstasy and grinding on people. <laughs> I cannot I, wait to talk to her about it's like this a, today. A weird confluence of like college kids, my I, my age people, influencers, and like reality TV stars who go to Coachella. And yeah. none of it looks fun. It looks dusty and hot. I went to Stagecoach one year, same place. I would do that. And that was a very mm -hmm. similar description to what exactly you just described, except instead of um, I guess rave music, it's, it was it's, it was country. And <laughs> Instead of ecstasy, it was like, you know, a warm Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> See, that's more my alley. So, so uh, program director Mary, when she goes out to Coachella, she made this kind of goof uh, photo album of all of the bare asses out at Coachella. Yeah. And so she said, hey, we got upgraded to VIP. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. 
I don't know what that means, but maybe some more exclusive ass shots from the VIP <laughs> section. And I immediately was sent this. Um, yeah, that is VIP <laughs> yeah. ass right, right. there. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's incredible that she just sneaks around and takes pictures of asses. <laughs> There's, apparently, there's a lot hanging out at Coachella, and when I look at the photos, yeah, it looks miserable to me. I yeah, that see, that's the thing. You got to do it the right way. Like, you need to get a big group of people, rent a nice house, only go for a couple hours, and make it about just hanging with friends instead of mm -hmm. like the festival itself. Because I don't know the how people that camp, survives it. Yeah, they camp and use like the pre-made showers and stuff out Yeesh. there. It looks Ugh. awful. I got a buddy who goes um, pretty consistently when he can get his hands on tickets. He always borrows like a cooler and our 10 by 10 tent and they camp. They'll like sleep on the truck, him and his friends. And I just say to him every time, like, is it is it fun? He was like, it's an experience. <laughs> I'm like, Great. I mean, you got to imagine the drugs take away some of the bad parts of it. Yeah. You know, like you just don't even notice that it's Are a million. Is that a requirement to do the drugs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, okay. when you get your wristband in the kit, they send you a bunch of drugs. Have you seen, like, just labeled drugs. Obviously, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, well, they're pretty. An envelope. <laughs> Have you seen the people that'll go like two weeks early and bury stuff? Like bodies. No, they'll bury drugs and alcohol on the ground on the, site, on the polo field? Yeah, and then leave like a little air tag in them so they can go find them once they get in. That's oh. actually kind of brilliant. Yeah, pretty smart. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, no thanks. I mean, I feel like the best way to go to Coachella is to not go to Coachella. <laughs> Bingo. Right. Uh, Teresa Gudice. Ju Judice. Judice. Yeah, yeah. The she was there. Teen Toys. She was there. Yeah, she was there. <sighs> God, one now, of, now uh, I wish I would have gone. One of Kendall's friends got a selfie with her, and Kendall was like, "We need to go to Coachella next year <laughs> for that one photo. Let's spend several hundred dollars." I got to tell you, I don't. If I don't ever make it there, I think I'll be okay. Same. Right? Yeah, same. However, at the same time, if I was offered to go there, I would get all gussied up and ready to go and have my ass <laughs> out. Ass out. I'll be burying some sort of mirror shirt. Tag. <laughs> I think honestly, the three of us need to find a way to UFC Fight Night this year. I, I want to go experience that. Yeah. In yeah. Vegas. Oh, we know people. Yeah, we, know we know people, people who know people. That's right. And we're going to get this going. And then we could watch our prize picks unfold live in front of us, Richie. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> like just you and me sitting at the T-Mobile arena or whatever, maybe front row right next to like uh, Donald Trump and Mark Wahlberg. Hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what. Let me see what I got going yeah, on. Here. I am dead cold right now. No, oh, oh, Richie. Richie was went on an absolute heater. Remember like three weeks ago, I was on my run where I couldn't lose on prize picks. Okay. So. I have eight entries win, uh, won since last weekend, and the amount I won, $303. Wow. I'm proud of you. I really am. <laughs> wow. Things are happening, guys. If you well. want to be like Rich, you need to download the prize picks app today. You're going to use promo code DOGS, bark, bark, D O G S, <laughs> and you're going to get a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Prize picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. It's the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike some of those other apps on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you're doing is picking more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you can watch the winnings roll in, and you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into 1,000 bucks with any of the sports that you can possibly see on TV and some that you can't see on TV. Well, yeah. Prize picks is awesome. Because there's like darts. There's power slap sometimes. Now, there's... Richie, have you messed with the demons yet? I have, yeah. The yeah little yeah. demons offer some higher payouts. Sometimes they'll say things like, hey, hey. You could click on this, but but only if you think that there's going to be more rebounds, but only if you think it's going to be uh, less than this many shots on these three holes at the Masters. That's what I love about prize picks is the options. It's not just straight up where you know you could get a little bored with some of these other daily fantasy apps. And I've tried a bunch of them, by the way. Prize picks by far is the most user friendly, and you can understand why it's the most popular in the world right now. Prize picks have me locked into. Uh, golf all weekend long. So whatever you're into, whether it is UFC, whether it's, uh, you know, golf events, whether it's basketball as we're heading into the playoffs, they've got you covered. And the discounts are the best part. Like we said, you could, you could have gotten Justin Gaethje over the weekend for a half significant strike. I think he finished with 80 something. So uh, be on the lookout for more discounts coming your way, especially with tomorrow being taco Tuesday, Friday being flex Friday. You got to get in now. Prize picks also offering Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, enormous selections of players and stat types. The quick withdrawals, Rich, I don't know if you've gotten there yet, but you can hit withdrawal on Sunday and have the money in your account by Monday. That's happened for me when I've had some $500 wins. It's an incredible help in your life. Download the Price Picks app today. Use code DOGS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's code DOGS, Mark Mark, on Price Picks for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. <laughs>
Hour number two, Big Rich TD and Fletch. This update presented by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air. We will start with the Padres. They won two out of three in LA over the weekend. Last night, Jerks and Profar played hero. Coming up big late in the game with a bases loaded double. That gave the Padres a 6-3 lead. Bullpen would hold. Padres now heading to Milwaukee for three against the Brewers. In golf, Scotty Scheffler wins the Masters, his second green jacket. He won by four strokes, finishing at 11 under par. And in the NBA, the play-in tournament begins tomorrow. We're already at the playoffs. Lakers got the Pelicans. Warriors get the Kings in the West on Wednesday. The Heat take on the Sixers. Hawks will get the Bulls on Wednesday night in the East. Heavy rain can lead to sewer line issues. Get ahead with Anderson's Drain Specialist. Nobody wants clients like they do, serving over half a million residential clients. For more than 45 years, Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. That's AndersonPHA.com. Yeah, happy Monday to those who celebrate Big Rich, TD, and Fletch with you here. And we had a busy sports week, and the NBA is hurtling toward their postseason. The Padres got their second series win. The Masters were on. UFC 300 had some great finishes. I, I feel like it's Monday, but I kind of feel exhausted from watching all of this exciting what, what's, what's going wrong on? what's wrong why, why do i click on things on the internet what'd you click oh, on your eyes look like they're burning what wait. did you click on juju no. smith schuster oh wait 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 wait, 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 wait. wait. google we, hang on wait, no you go you to on twitter, twitter for this one you go to that he's like driving in his car i don't understand why on my computer i have to go to twitter but on my phone i have to go to x <laughs> i'll just send it to you guys really mess up my algorithm <laughs> right off the right off the get-go uh do not look at his snapchat yeah okay. just go ahead and look at the tweet i sent you Mm -hmm. just, why, what are we doing here guys for keep it. your inside the pants stuff inside the pants okay. that's it. that's a plain old wiener <laughs> ah, that's very funny wow here's my question what? by the way look at the face he's making i know yeah, no kidding <laughs> <laughs> like dude why, it just uh, there was a, a like a story it looked like on one of those football aggregate sites that said yeah. can't believe what juju smith schuster just did so i clicked on it thinking oh something nfl news and then it's that <laughs> Is there ever a moment where you're like, you know what? I should pull this out in the car, and then I should take a picture. Uh, by yeah. the way, it's a selfie, is it not? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on his Snapchat, I guess. Jesus. Which apparently is a thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, um, good for him. <laughs> I mean, it's just can a, he get in trouble for that? Well, yeah. I, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I didn't want to see it. Yeah, I guess maybe depends i mean there's a female passenger in the car with him so she, I guess she didn't look alarmed yeah she seemed like <laughs> she seemed like she's seen it before here's it's your nfl news normal. for the day juju smith schuster out yeah just went hog wow. wild <laughs> went hog wait wild. are you out on juju smith schuster or is he out he is literally out <laughs> well bad. yeah yeah well, i guess so yeah 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 hmm. it's all on display Anyways, oh, well, uh, look, uh, that's a way to start your morning. Uh, you don't need coffee. Just go straight to Twitter and search Juju Smith Schuster. <laughs> and you will be so fired up. <laughs> By the way, he's a wide receiver in the NFL. I think he's currently under contract with the Patriots. Bill Belichick waking up this morning. That's what he's going to see. Why would Bill Belichick care? Oh, yeah. Care? Belichick's not even a Patriots coach anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, Bill, no, Bill Belichick cares because he's into it. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the Patriots coach now? Gerard What's... Mayo. Gerard Mayo. It's his problem now. <laughs> Belichick's That's like, what happens <laughs> when Belichick <laughs> leaves New England. All of a sudden. Take care of that, Gerard. Yeah. Good luck. I'm yeah. going to be at a cheerleading competition. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> right. Exactly oh that. Gosh. Meanwhile, the Padres had a pretty good weekend. Yeah. Yeah, they certainly did. They take two of three from the Dodgers. They're on their way to Milwaukee now. They're going to face the Brewers next. Maybe they can win three series in a row. We were searching. We were searching for a series win when the Cubs came to town. And now, all of a sudden, they've got two of them. 
They win another one? That's a streak. That's a <laughs> Wait, series it, win streak. That had to be three. Well, no, no, no. no this would be the third series they could win in a row. Oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah. this, oh sorry. I thought you meant they already had three. So funny <laughs> story about Milwaukee and teams that go to play against the Brewers. They stay in this hotel, which is called the P-F-I-S-T-E-R. Is that Fister? Fister, maybe? Yeah. Fister Hotel in downtown Milwaukee. Wow. That hotel Graphic. has mm-hmm. a reputation of being haunted. That's right. And mm-hmm. like there's certain mm-hmm. major league baseball players who will not stay in that hotel. Yeah, they'll get other arrangements. Or they'll yeah. set up an Airbnb somewhere. But that's really like that's the hotel that is big enough to fit a team. So that's the one that teams stay at. But I wonder if there's going to be any hauntings with the Padres there. Man, so. Saturday? I don't know. Maybe it was Saturday. Maybe it was Friday. I don't know. We were downtown. We were in Old Town going by the Whaley House. And I was thinking, we really need to go on a ghost tour. What happens though, as, a, as a show? If we, we say we were going to spend the night there, yeah, but can we set that up? I mean, can you stay the night there? I mean, we probably could. Now, hang on, <laughs> Fisher Hotel. Ooh, you know, all of a sudden things are happening. Ooh, <laughs> Fisher Hotel history. Here Let's look go. at that. Okay, here we go. We're getting into some. Okay, the Fisher Hotel in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has been a hotel icon since 1893, when Guido, or I should say Guido Fister, and his son Charles opened it. The hotel was first a boutique. Uh, but blah, blah, blah. Well, oh no, it was the first boutique hotel in the world to have an individual thermostat that controls every guest room, blah, blah, blah. Um, visited by some of the nation's most powerful people, including uh, President McKinley in 1897, blah, blah, blah. Wait a second, it doesn't say anything about being haunted. So there's a website here that I'm looking at called hauntedrooms.com where you can literally book rooms at the Fister Hotel in Wisconsin on hauntedrooms.com. Oh, mm. interesting. Okay. Just type in Fister Haunted. All right. I'm checking that now. Okay. History of hauntings. Okay. Oh, there. Here we go. The Fister Hotel in Milwaukee, Wisconsin has a history of hauntings, including apparitions, strange footsteps, and objects moving by themselves. Some say the spirit of of Charles Fister, the hotel's former owner, is responsible for the haunting. Guests have reported seeing Fister's apparition on the grand staircase in the Ministrels Gallery on the ninth floor some say he's also they've also seen dogs in the hallways and then oh oh, wow okay so major league baseball (laughs) players who have reported paranormal activity at the hotel include michael young adrian uh, beltre there you used to play for the dodgers and i think he was a padre for a while too Oh, bryce harper said he heard knocking in the hallway and on his door he went out to investigate but found no one later he saw the air conditioning and the television switch on and off by themselves while he was sleeping. He was awakened by pounding noises from behind his headboard. He was so scared that he took a bat with him to bed for protection. He was only able to sleep for two hours during his three-night stay. Does a bat work against apparitions? I don't know. Okay. You would know. You're the one with ghost experience. Yeah, I would say no. Depends say if no, they it throw like a, like a, a curve or a, maybe a cutter. <laughs> try, in try. which case, then, yeah, you better have a bat. What team is coming into town in Milwaukee on april 24th why why do you ask is that an important date well no i'm just looking at the prices so the prices of the fister hotel uh tonight 220 bucks 243 210 as we move along here uh april 21st it drops down to 175 bucks stays about 180 till the 24th and then it's 970 dollars a night whoa what's going on Milwaukee. Well, maybe there's something like important that happens in Milwaukee, like a beer fest that weekend. Yeah, right. Oh, that could be or like a cornhole is, tournament. Text line's asking for you to get a hold of the hotel staff to do an interview. That's a good call. Yeah, I mean, what? 100%. Um, look for that to happen tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Done I can deal. try during the break. No, we can do it tomorrow. Okay, we'll get okay. it set up. So, yeah, they, they're first. Actually, it's perfect because tomorrow's their first game against Milwaukee, assumedly. No, they play today. Are they playing? Oh, yeah. No, I don't think so. Do they? Yeah, they do play today. They do. 440 tonight. They got 440 first pitch. We got Musgrove on the mound. He's going to be taking on whoever Ross is. Let's look at Joe Ross from Milwaukee. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Ross from Friends? (laughs) I think it's a different Ross. Oh, I really do. I really, really do. Actually, yeah. Look, he doesn't look at anything like that. That's definitely a different guy. Definitely a different Ross. Definitely a different guy. Uh, This is the one where Joe Ross loses to Joe Musgrove, though. (laughs) Will any of them have any sort of wind up and pitching style like Nestor Cortez Jr.? Oh, please, God. <laughs> I want this to become the norm in all of Major League Baseball. Same. So, if you've never seen Nestor Cortez pitch, we should probably put this up somewhere for our listeners, right. maybe on uh, Big Rich TD Fletch on Instagram. But he <laughs> he went into his wind up 
and then <laughs> and then he faked through the baseball. <laughs> he went into his lineup and he took his hand out of his glove like he was going to throw toward home base before his front foot landed, and he kind of went ha. And then, <laughs> <laughs> whoever is thrown to uh the yankees pitcher whoever is thrown to th the ball was fouled off and i'm sure it was it was like going through the batter's head like the hell did i just watch it was unbelievable uh, apparently no bach because he he didn't put his foot down yeah, is that yeah. the reason and also yeah. he was heading toward home plate the whole time if you're in constant motion heading towards home plate and there's oh. runners on base there's no block if there's no runners on base it doesn't matter anyway he was in constant motion because it was like what what and, whoop, and go you just can't come it, set after you come set the first time and everything needs to be forward motion it's, but it's so stupid no, i hate it's it. the it's best the funniest no, thing ever. It, <laughs> I, this isn't even like a, I'm not, I like, I like bat flips. I like the game being more fun. I like celebrations mm -hmm. and stuff. This mm -hmm. is just dumb though. No, this is, I'm not good enough to strike you out normally. So I have to do a bunch of gimmicks. Yeah. It sounds Wrong. like something I would do. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> this is the dad joke of baseball pitches. It's, yes. It, bring it, it. It would almost be like, you know, geez, I can't believe I let up that single, but how about this banana <laughs> peel in the baseline? <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, <laughs> think I'm gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe. I they they didn't tell us the Yankees lost. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean I don't think it was Nestor's. No, fault. no. See, Soto is coming under a little bit of fire. Is he? What for? What he was coming back into first base, and Josh Naylor, former Padre, was playing first base, and uh, as Soto was coming back to first base, he pushed over poor Josh Naylor. Just well, gave him a shove hmm. right in the tuckus. Was he blocking the plate though? Or like barely blocking, blocking first base. Soda could have gone around him easily. It, oh, it didn't seem like a necessary thing. He also didn't really push him that hard, but Josh Naylor went down like a ton of bricks. Yeah, you got to sell the flop. Yeah, so <laughs> you got to sell the flop. It's a lot like time. how I imagine TD going into Albertsons was. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> just, I'm telling you. Bam. Like I, if somebody would have clocked that, I'm sure I'd be in the Guinness Book of World Records of how long that took me to the fall. The longest fall. Oh my God, it was crazy. You're all the way yeah. back to the story like in produce. <laughs> <laughs> Still just whoa, tripping whoa, over myself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Well, I need milk anyways. Good thing I made it to dairy. <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> That's absolutely yeah. awesome. <laughs> the The worst part was when I fell. I like rolled through something wet, and I'm like, please don't. Please God. Oh, That's the worst. <laughs> that is the worst. Yeah. Oh, um, mm -hmm. All right. Coming up, we got a pair of tickets to Lakeside Rodeo. We'll tell you how to win those. Also, a pair of tickets to see a little indoor football. San Diego Strike Force. Uh, we'll get you set up with those as well. But first, let's hit a halftime. Or not, not monologue? Let's do or either one. Okay. It's going to be monologue because that's what I have cute. Okay. Up. Very good. Friday. Friday. <laughs> Since Friday. Friday. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, it is. Who wants to go first? Fletch, TD? Anybody? I can go. It's going to go? be quick. All right, Fletch. All right. How are the NBA playoffs starting now when they don't finish until June? <laughs> like, <laughs> we got three months worth of NBA playoffs? Yeah. Well, this... when you let 20 teams in <laughs> and you play an opening play in tournament and then every single other series has you know, potential to go to five or seven games. Yeah, you need a little time. So the play-in rounds start tomorrow, and they uh, the tomorrow and Wednesday, west on tomorrow, east on Wednesday, and then those will go on this week. And then there's a break, like a week-long break, before in May the actual playoffs get started, and then they go all the way through May, and then halfway through June. So you're talking half of April, all of May, half of June. So two months, Sweet. Jeez. two Sweet. months of NBA playoffs. Are you boys ready for that? Yeah, lock it yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fired up. CD, you got some more puns because you still got two months worth of them. I'm, you know what? I they're they're getting stretched now, but I feel <laughs> I feel confident. I feel confident that I can make it through it. I just it's Slippery the NBA. Slope. Yeah, it is. And Especially I don't know what the viewership Alpha numbers are going to be. Like the, in the past, the play-in tournament flat, has actually no worked slopes. for viewership because the Warriors and the Lakers have been in it pretty much every year. But as you go on through these playoffs, if like Boston and LA aren't the two teams in the finals. By the time you get to the finals, I think everyone's going to be burnt out. I think it's going to be most likely Boston and Denver again. I don't think anybody's beating Denver in the West. I don't think anybody's beating Boston in the East. It's just, you kind of look at it. I'm not, look, that's an unfortunate thing about the NBA is you can sort of call shots like that. And a lot of times you can be correct because you're playing over series. So it's one and done. We should go to Vegas right now and place a bunch of futures on those two teams. I mean, I bet you, I don't know what kind of odds you would get. I haven't looked at the lines, but yeah, 
I would. I mean, NBA, it sort of feels like a little bit easier to predict than some of the other sports. If we left right after the show, we could be in Vegas by <laughs> two. That's true. Place doing whatever that bets August. you need, and then we're home by like seven. I mean, yeah, in August, I'm going to drive to Vegas right after we get done here. And then I need to be there by four o'clock for the Morgan Wallen concert. It's no problem. You got Hopefully that. I can make it. Wait, the Morgan Wallen con- concerts at four o'clock. That's when like doors open for people to get in. And, and we you're... wanted to see Jelly Roll. So do you not have assigned seats? I have no idea. I didn't buy these tickets. <laughs> it's at Allegiant Stadium, which is kind of cool. I'm excited yeah. about that. It seems like you'd have assigned seats. <laughs> we probably do, but I still want to get in and experience I have no it. No idea. <laughs> I'm just, I, Alex gonna, bought the tickets. I don't know. We're going to be there at four o'clock. Oh, by the way, Alex and uh, his love interest, M. M. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. This is what we we're calling her. Yeah, M. Uh, how are things there? I have no idea. I haven't heard mm. anything in a while. Let's call one of them. Yeah. Let's not. Just what? Get him on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talk to him about yeah. everything. Get that an happened. update. I mean, we set him up pretty good. I remember that. (laughs) Is that your monologue? No, no, it's not my monologue. My monologue is actually Masters related, which is shocking because I did borderline on, should I talk fruit snack gushers? And then I was like, nah, I'll go Masters because yesterday, as I was watching the Masters, I couldn't help but notice the attire that a lot of the players had on. Okay. Pants, shirts, Shirts. shoes. The shirts, the shirts they wore. Okay, walking around, a Nike swoosh prominently placed on the shirt, of course. On the back right shoulder, that's where they put the Nike swoosh. So every time I look at the TV, I go, dude, shirt's on backwards. Dude, shirt's on backwards. The dude's shirt's on backwards. There's a reason. So I can see them on camera? because when you think about it, if you're teeing off, right? Oftentimes, the camera angle is from the back. Okay. Or when you're uh, dry or you ha- hit your approach shot to the green, oftentimes the camera is behind the golfer. Okay. So Nike is just smart. Why don't they put it like in the middle, like up towards the back of the neck? Why the right shoulder? Well, it it depends on the handedness of the golfer. And, and he's 100% correct. So this actually, my family has something to do with this. What? So... <laughs> So careful it was, it was printed incorrectly and they said go with it no no so ann's mom's business tracks tv time of brand locations for some of these golf brands wow and so there has been conversation in the past that she's had with manufacturers whether it be you know whatever whatever golf manufacturers out there of hey you know we're just letting you know like the traditional places that you're putting brand placement on hats and shirts doesn't work and so some of the brands have listened and some haven't and Nike listened. And I guess Nike listened. And it's, well, it's clearly working because I saw a Nike swoosh a <laughs> hundred thousand times. Yeah. See, I thought your monologue, because I saw this on the rundown that it was about golf attire, mm-hmm. yeah. was going to be about like what Jason Day was wearing all weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which he I, had the parachute pants on Thursday. I kind of liked it. And then do you see he got told to remove the shirt oh, the, he was wearing on the, Friday? The sweater. Though, he had the, to go shirtless. No, he just had to <laughs> swap. Can you imagine? It's just like it's like golfing like us. <laughs> yeah. Just like by whole nine, he had his shirt off. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> the uh, Masters man. is pretty stuck up though. Like the fans aren't allowed to have their phones. No, yeah. They regulate what you can and can't wear. They also don't let you drink beer. It's like a window. It's like you, yeah. they don't sell it before a certain time. They oh, don't right, sell it right. after a certain time. I was watching some TikTok videos, which I found fascinating on the Masters about how every single day they're out there filling divots. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's like an army of people out there filling divots and it, it i mean it's just incredible was it friday that was the day where the wind was really crazy yeah. in the afternoon times oh no way that was thursday well, thursday was crazy friday it was a whole other oh, level okay. and so but in between every hole they would have an army of little grounds crew people walking out there with leaf blowers clearing the green because the sand from the bunkers was all over the green because of the wind and that sand from the bunkers is not actually sand it no. is the silica or something it's the byproduct of a quartz mine out in north carolina south carolina somewhere over there it's so white yeah it's just white it's just white crystal yeah yeah it's crazy Incredible. it is yeah so they have like mountains of that somewhere on the property you'll never see where it is and they come out with their little shovels and they fill all in the, it's it's <laughs> wild saturday morning they had Dottie, who's been on the sidelines for pga tour forever she's a golf commentator and she was talking about the story of the azaleas and how that property that augusta national actually lays on used to be a nursery and so they were famous for these azaleas that they grew in the nursery. And so now that green room or the what do they call it? 
greenhouse. greenhouse. That greenhouse still exists on the property, and that is where all the azaleas are birthed, mm -hmm. and then they transport them out to the course. And then huh. in the off season, tons of weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're just getting high for most of the time. Crazy. Um, here's here's my monologue. I'll be brief. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun for you if you're a Tiger Woods fan because that's probably the last time you're going to see him play in a Masters. Tiger Woods has famously said that the only golf he's interested in playing is competitive golf. The only golf he wants to play is golf where he thinks he has a chance to win. I, I don't know if we're going to see him compete in any major tournament that he doesn't feel like he can win. And you saw his best shot Thursday and Friday of keeping it together. And then the wheels completely came off. And then also remember the record. He just, he broke a new record 24th consecutive start at the mat or cut made at the masters. That's probably never going to be broken. And so I think, you know, he, he might have one final notch in the belt where he goes, okay, now I can lay that one to rest. And uh, it's unfortunate, but it, it was something that was setting in on me on Saturday. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, I, I know the cameras don't want to go to Tiger because he's struggling, but I wish they would because this may be the very last time we get to see him at Augusta National. It was a rough watch. I kind of do wonder if he's on the phone this morning with Liv saying, hey, are you still offering me a billion dollars to come over? Because <laughs> I think I'm cooked over here. Yeah, yeah. I, was, honestly, uh, I was like dude. a little emotional watching him on Saturday because he couldn't play. Yeah. Like yeah. a double bogey, triple bogey, bogey, like that front nine on Saturday when he was really collapsing. It was tough for me to watch. It. I think that the weather was very unfortunate for him well, where, where he had to finish round or the first round. And then immediately it was like 90 minutes later. Yeah, it was 90 minutes. Boom. He's he's doing it again. Well, and yeah. you could tell he was gassed. 23 whole round on Friday to finish out round one and go into round two. And he still managed to play basically par golf both days. It was impressive impressive but it cooked him yeah like you said saturday there was a point where he unbuckled his pants he had his trousers pulled down where you could just about see his butt mm -hmm. and he's like rubbing like icy hot or ben gay on his hip yeah like he's just trying to get himself together i mean just he can't play anymore he can't play or i shouldn't say that he he can't finish a tournament anymore uh under those conditions or i don't know what conditions because we saw him drop out of the genesis open at riviera that was food poisoning. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. who knows if he would have even finished that one. Uh, and then what we saw at the Masters, obviously. So, yeah, hopefully it's not the last, but it might have been. All right, coming up next, Major League Baseball has a new problem. So, first it was see-through pants. Now it's slick balls. Wait, Andy doesn't have anything to do with, uh, or Andy's family doesn't have anything to do with see-through pants. <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Want to talk to you guys not about pants or slick balls. I want to talk to you about feet. And at the Good Feet store, they have these arch supports. Okay. These arch supports, they are phenomenal, especially if you're somebody, shoot, like Tiger Woods, who struggles with lower body joint pain. I mean, I'm sure after walking as many holes as he did over the weekend, uh, playing golf at the Masters, uh, he could use some arch supports in his in his shoes to 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 balance them out, to get some of that pain relief that I've experienced in my own life. If you struggle with knee pain, hip pain, back pain, uh, foot or ankle pain, the Good Feet store is for you. I'm a success story. Went in there about two and a half years ago. Didn't really know much about them. Um, put these orthotic art supports in my shoes for the first time. Walked out of there feeling like, okay, this is new. This is different. A week later, I'm like, oh, this is working. And that's what a lot of people report when they go to the Good Feet store. You can book your first appointment at goodfeet.com or check a nearest location to you. I promise there's one near you. They have 200 plus locations across the U.S. and overseas. And this is the reason why, because every city, every state, everybody wants to have some of that pain relief that uh, comes hand in hand, or I should say foot in foot with the Good Feet store. So again, you struggle with any lower body joint pain, the Good Feet store should be your first stop. Check them out today at goodfeet.com.
Major League Baseball has a big, big problem. We'll explain. Coming up next. This update is presented by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. We will start off here with the Padres, who won two out of three in L.A. over the weekend. Last night, Jerks and Profar saving the day late in the game. He had a bases loaded double that took a 6-3 lead for the Padres, which would hold to the finish. Padres now head to Milwaukee for a three-game series against the Brewers. In golf, Scotty Scheffler winning the Masters by four strokes, finishing at 11 under par. And in the NBA, playing tournament gets going tomorrow. Lakers and Pelicans, Warriors and Kings. Then on Wednesday, Heat take on the Sixers. Hawks get the Bulls Wednesday night. In the east, heavy rain can lead to sewer line issues. Get ahead with Anderson's drain specialists. Nobody wows clients like they do, serving over a half million residential clients for more than 45 years. Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. That's AndersonPHA.com. Woo! Big deal over here. Big deal. Because we have your chance for you to win bonus bucks. And I'm talking about $1,000 every single day. By we, I do mean San Diego Sports 760. Not We're not forking over a grand here on Big Bear CD <laughs> Flesh. However, the station is, and you've got a shot at a quarter million dollars. All you have to do is listen for a keyword, and then you take the keyword over to sportssd.com and enter it, and that'll put you in the running for $1,000. Not Ooh, bad. Multiple not- chances a day. So uh, keep listening for that. Also keep listening for your chance to win Lakeside Rodeo tickets. Also San Diego Strike Force. That's indoor football league right here in San Diego. We'll have those tickets for you coming up in just a little bit. But how about this? We had see-through pants take mm-hmm. over baseball during mm-hmm. spring training. Well, really the start of the season, but it took over the world. Really. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Now it's um, slick balls. Balls are way too slippery. Sometimes that happens when the pants. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. So Kenley Jensen, who used Laps to be both a, of you. What? Well, come on. <laughs> what? Kenley Jensen should take a lap. Talking here. about baseballs. Um, the 36-year-old right-hander closer. He entered with a two-run lead. Uh, first, he hit a, a batter leading off. Then he gave up a single. Walked Anthony Rendon. Uh, <laughs> 
just a bit outside. And then, uh, and then finally was able to uh, strike out a couple for his fourth save in four chances. So he was talking about the early struggles he was having. He said, I don't hit guys. I don't walk guys this much. I, I I'm starting to get frustrated. Jensen said any balls that came, I just throw it back until I find a good ball. He goes, and that's just brutal. It's embarrassing. It's been a while. I've been playing in this league from the beginning of my career until now, and it's getting worse. So his complaint is that the inconsistency of the balls that he's playing with, he, he, I mean, some pitchers will talk about the perceived dangers of throwing really, really hard at, uh, at hitters and the potential for injury. Some, some are just complaining because, you know, they're getting lit up and that's not the pitch that they were trying to throw, but the ball slipped out of their hands. What do you guys make of this? Is this just sour grapes or does he have an actual point? I don't think he has an actual point. I don't think that there's uh it, I just don't think there's that much discrepancy in the balls. I just don't. I mean, especially if they're new coming at you. There's definitely discrepancy. It's been an issue now for a few years. Uh Kenley Jansen's the first person I've heard talking about it this year, and I don't particularly like Kenley Jensen, so it's gonna skew my story because he used to be a Dodger. But I get that there's been an issue. I just feel like you would have heard more about it so far this season, and we really have it. So if Kenley Jensen's the only one talking about it, I'm going to say he's just not ha- doesn't have his main stuff anymore. Did you see the how it's made where they made the baseball? Crazy. I mean, it's it's cool. It's I mean, it's, cool. it's very it's cool. It's just a bunch of yarn wrapped around a little tiny ball. Yeah, and they're stamping out these pieces of leather and sewing them together. And I mean, it's it's impressive. However, you're telling me that there's just sheets of leather that or a little slicker? No, or... I think this is Kenley Jensen complaining that they can't use the sticky stuff anymore. Oh, yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Well, well, he is specifically talking about the baseballs, though. He wasn't talking about, like, what he used or used to use to get more spin or, you know, have more tack on his hand. He was talking about how, like, the balls themselves, like, because, look, it's not just the baseballs out of a box and they roll them out or put them in a bucket or hand a bunch to the umpires. They they do a lot of prep work. Like mm-hmm. they'll they'll rub them with mud, and the mud is from a specific location, and it's shipped into another location, and then they're incubated or put in a whatever it is a humidor for a little yeah, while. It's like the cigar box, except yeah. for yeah, baseballs. Yeah. And so so like there's this whole process that these baseballs are supposed to go through before they arrive at the mound. And sage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they burn sage. <laughs> they 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 hit a gong a few times over the balls, and he's saying whatever they're doing to rough up or rub up these balls with the mud or whatever else they put on them. He goes, it's so inconsistent that he's now struggling at 36 years old, or who knows, maybe his grip is changing. I I've, I haven't heard it from anybody else this season, but you hear pitchers every once in a while. Like two years ago, it was blisters. It was tons of talk about how pitchers were having trouble with the baseballs because they changed the stitching, maybe whatever it may be, and a bunch of guys had blisters. When the sticky stuff ban went into effect, you would hear Tyler Glass now, who was on the Rays at that time, complaining about the safety of the hitters. And then you would even hear from some hitters like, let them use the sticky stuff because that's going to keep my brain on my body. And they're not going to take my head off with a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. Yeah, it's it's weird. I think baseball players, especially pitchers, they kind of sound like prima donnas when they start complaining this much about baseball the wide receivers of baseball. They kind of are. And it, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I understand. Maybe it's not fair, but it's so unrelatable to most baseball fans. Like the reality of the situation is to us, the perceived thought is like, okay, yeah, but that ball is the same ball that the rest of the pitchers were using through the other innings in the game, and you're the only one complaining, so what's going on, Kenley? Put a little suntan lotion on your hands, mix it with some of that, uh, what do they call the rosin bag? Mm -hmm. You know, that gets you the sticky stuff feel. I think that's what a lot of pitchers are doing now anyways. Yeah, they're using sweat. They're just getting better at cheating, which is what baseball has been in its history. Well, and that's not even, well, I don't know if it's considered cheating with the suntan lotion, but like, but that, that, Classically, it's considered some of the things you're allowed to get away with yeah. because they they want you to have some tech for a long time. Spider tech was literally sitting in people's dugouts, yeah, like just out in the open. And yeah. then Major League Baseball said that that's illegal to use. Yeah, but part of this, you know, these wild pitches, you know, it's to me, it's looking at it or saying, hey, we need to use something that we have some sort of tack on here because it's just dangerous. It's dangerous, <laughs> and we want to be safe out here. What we got? Yeah, what, 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 what are we squinting now? Nothing, sorry, my legs hurting. Uh, wait, 
Do you have any more painkillers? I haven't been taking them at all. But have you just... tried to have us take them to see if it helps your leg? That's a good point. You yeah. guys just want some Percocet? We're thinking no, maybe man. for the eight o'clock hour. <laughs> Just to make sure your leg's okay. I still have like half a bottle at home, but no, it's like every once in a while, and people can probably relate to this if you've broken something, it comes out of nowhere, but you just get these random pulses that I can like feel in my neck of blood pumping, and at the same time, it's pumping through my leg, and it hurts like the dickens. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Interesting you know what, turn yeah. of phrase right there. You know, you know it's, speaking of see-through pants. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, you know what's great is even with a broken leg. Yeah. Still drop a few pounds. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't need to exercise. No. 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 You don't need to count calories. Or Never points. have. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh-uh. 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 Don't need to do any of that with SD fat loss. The Not gonna na- happen. The natural way. That's absolutely correct. The natural way. The healthy way. And Wayne and Chloe over at SD fat loss, they'll sit down with you. They'll talk about you know what's going on with your life. You know what? So what are you allergic to? <laughs> Fletch will say acorns. They'll say, we've never heard of that before. And he'll say, yeah, well, when I'm walking, if, if there's an acorn near me, I will fall. I will break my leg. And they went, that's fine. We're still going to help you lose some weight. And you're going to lose 20 to 30 pounds in eight weeks time. And Fletch said, you got to be kidding me, even with a broken leg. And they said, yes. And it happened. It was amazing. Uh, it happened for all of us, actually. Uh, 31 pounds for me. Rich, uh, 35 plus, Fletch over 40 pounds and still keeping that weight off. And that's the beauty of this whole thing. You lose weight the natural, healthy way, not some fad diet, not some medical injection that you have to do that as soon as you stop, you gain whatever weight you lost right back. It doesn't happen with SD fat loss because they show Uh -uh. you the right way to do it. You keep it off and that's what we've been doing. And we're thankful for it, man. We all feel a lot better. Our families, they can tell that, you know, we have more energy where we can sleep better at night. The the aches and pains that you had are going away because you've shed 20 to 30 pounds in eight weeks time, but then you keep that off. And I'm telling you, you're going to live a lot longer when you lose that excess weight. And as you're coming into summertime, look, I get it. I get the fact that you're trying to look good, real good, real good, right? And you know, losing 20 to 30 pounds in eight weeks time, that'll put you right at summertime and you're going to look real good just like us and i'm not talking one piece i'm talking two piece oh yeah two piece Tank, that's what's gonna happen tankini right maybe a bikini what? <laughs> exactly correct now if you're thinking well i do want to start the thing but uh, do you have a coupon or something well you're damn right i do yeah and the coupon <laughs> is our name so just tell them that big rich td and flex sent you you're gonna save yourself 200 bucks over there so sdfatloss.com the consultation is absolutely free and like i said mention the show and you're going to save even more money. SDFatLoss.com. Coming up, the old switcheroo, guys. It <laughs> happened at a Dodger Stadium. We'll explain. Coming up next.
Hey, it's Rich for Golden Triangle Plastic Surgery, the man zone. So what is the man zone? Well, it is a place for all of your needs. If you're a gentleman in your ages, ranging 40s, 50s, 60s, even in your 30s. In my late 30s, I went in, I got my testosterone tech tested by Dr. Roy David, who's the medical director over at the man zone. He's also a double board certified plastic surgeon. I got my T levels checked. I was in the 300 range much lower than where I should be at my age. They explained to me that my low testosterone probably contributed to some of the things I was feeling. I was sluggish, tired, uh, lacked motivation to get in the gym. It, that had been going on for a long time. And I was just like, well, I guess, you know, as a former professional athlete, whatever. I, I mean, maybe it's just that time has passed and, you know, a lot of guys must go through this. Well, no, no, there, there can be a reason why, you're struggling to get out of bed in the morning. There could be a reason why you're struggling when you go to the gym. Even when you make it there, you're lacking the motivation because you might be low on testosterone. It's something you should check out. So again, if you're in your 40s, your 50s, or your 60s, this should be mandatory. You, you should make sure every time you go in for your annual physical, you also stop over at the man zone. You get your T levels checked to make sure that everything is up to the standard that it needs to be for you to optimize your your health. As a man in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you know, there's plenty that can go wrong, but if you have your T levels in check, there's a lot more that can go right for you. So again, uh head over to the man zone. You can check them out at the manzone.com. That's the manzone.com. Get your T levels checked today. Start your journey at the manzone.com. We are flying through a Monday. Gosh, it's already almost 8 o'clock. If you're on your way to school and you're interested in taking the kids out to the Lakeside Rodeo, uh, keep it right here. We're going to be giving those tickets away in just a few minutes. We'll tell you how to win those. Also, we're going to have a pair of tickets to see the San Diego Strike Force Indoor Football League uh, right here in San Diego. So we'll get to all that. But we had a we had an instance at the Padres game of a little uh, a little switcheroo, a little bait and switch, a little. <laughs> a li I mean, little. This almost looked like a magic trick. Like, how did this guy yeah. know? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. How did he just brought a baseball just in case? Yesterday's game, Manny Machado hits a bomb. The dude who catches it, a Dodger fan in a Dodger jacket, grabs the ball slips it into his pocket, then pulls out a different ball to throw back to the field of, you know, I reject this home run. He is a closeted Padres fan. <laughs> that's I promise. That's or that's absolutely. on eBay now for 60 bucks if you like to buy. I don't really know. It's awesome. Yeah. Yo, it's awesome. Yeah. I, well, I wouldn't want to throw it back. Well, I, I definitely would want the 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 collector's item. He, it's an outfield seat, so maybe he's caught home runs before. I don't know. But yeah, Manny launches one to left center, <laughs> and we're watching the video now. The guy who caught it, yeah, he, he did, slips it, it in his pocket quick. It looked like a magic trick. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, take that, you big jerk. We hate you here in LA, don't we, fellas?" <laughs> like, the, the ball he throws back says, "Like Pony League." <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. He, he didn't buy a major league baseball; those uh, are expensive. Pulled this off the Shetland Field yeah. in uh, in in La Jolla. It's like all beat up, like a range ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, how about Machado though? Starting to happen, right? You know, he's been DHing this season. Machado's looking good. I yeah. mean, things are starting to come around for a lot of the Padres plays, players who they need to count on. Tatis has always been a Dodger killer. He plays well up at Dodger Stadium. I mean, for crying out loud, they put a plaque up for him. Um, <laughs> that's not a lie. So for some reason, still unknown yeah. to most of us, Fernando Tatis Jr. has a plaque that 
marks his longest homer at Dodger <laughs> Stadium. Yeah, that's that's Is, a real story. Do we know if that's the only opposing team that has a plaque up? I would, no, there's a few. I would say that, no. This I think really? Mark McGuire has a plaque. Oh, oh, no, oh. No, 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 no. I thought you meant the only team that has a plaque of Fernando Tatis Jr. Oh, no. Well, no. I mean, like, uh, yeah, at Dodger Stadium, are there other players yeah. from opposing teams that they have plaques up? So Mark McGuire has one. Willie Stargell has it. Um, and he was, I believe, a Pittsburgh Pirate player when he. Oh, that's it. He's got the longest one. He, he yeah. won five hundred and six. It's. I think it's a dumb tradition that the Dodgers do. Yeah, that is dumb. I don't want the opposing team's plaque at my stadium. Well, I don't care what you've done. I guess they're gonna have to put one right in the outfield where Manny Machado hit that home run. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know what the cutoff is, though. What? We were having this all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So now Fernando's this home is run. This the double. <laughs> there's, some, there's some, like, trophy store in L.A. They're like, this is awesome. We love home games. <laughs> Fernando's home run that actually left, uh, the one that he has the 467 plaque for, actually went out of Dodger Stadium. So I wonder if that is the cutoff. Oh, okay. If it no, leaves Dodgers leave Because it hit the concourse and then bounced out. And that's so awesome. I, it was badass. It was huge. But I, I don't know if that's the cutoff. I just think it's a dumb tradition. Yeah. I, I could not imagine six. going to Petco Park and seeing a Freddie Freeman plaque out in right field. Let me ask you this question. So say, I don't know, a famous Dodger player uh, hits, a, hits a home run. You know, like somebody who, like well, Manny Machado, he's been playing for 10 plus years, you know. Think about a Dodger player who you, I mean, I don't know. Say, Max Muncy. Max Muncy, say he plays, say he plays 12 years and you're at Petco Park. You happen to be sitting in the outfield and all of a sudden Muncy hits a home run. Are you throwing it back or are you keeping it? Me? Yeah. Keeping it. Yeah. I think <laughs> I, would, I am too. I'd keep it. Yeah. I'd keep it. I mean, but I mean, is there, is there a distance that a home run could be hit that you'd go, that's plaque worthy? At Petco Park? At Petco no. Park? I mean, it was a thousand feet. I mean, unless it was Fernando Tatis Jr. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand feet. If it's a thousand feet, I want the plaque to be on the street where it lands. That's what, that's what I would say, too. Or in the hotel bedroom that it crashes through or into. the Coronado Bridge. <laughs> oh, Lord. Wherever it is. I just don't know if there is there a cutoff. You know, uh, yeah, Gallagher, I mean, I mean, if it lands in Gallagher Square, you know, like, if it, it should, on the, well, I guess it would be on the other side of it if it's a thousand feet. I, it would be kind of cool at that point if it was, you know, you put a little disc in the ground of where the yeah, ball but who hit. Is it? Like, if it's Fernando, I'm all for it. Yeah. If it's a Dodger, no, we forget about that. Yeah. What if it's a former Padre? Hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, That's right? a tricky one. What? Are there any former Padres currently on the Dodgers? I don't. I think they might have a pitcher. Think so Juan Soto comes and hits a 506 foot bomb. Damn. What do you do? You put former Padre Juan Soto 506. Weird. I think we have to take a break. Yeah, it's getting close. Yeah, it is. In um, that case, what? you would probably put the plaque up. You probably would. <laughs> yeah, but that still sucks. Soto was part of an NLCS team. Yeah, 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 but if he hits it with the Dodgers, it still feels dirty. <laughs> well, he's on a Dodger yeah, right yeah. now. He might be next year, but not right now. Well, not right now. Yeah. He's a, well, he's a Yankee now. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you want to win those Lakeside Rodeo tickets, 877-767-4760. That's 877-SORG with an S and a G, 760. God, I just got a little sick. Yeah. Juan Soto could be a Dodger next oh, year. Oh, there's no oh, question God. about it. It's possible. Do you think he would take a 10-year deferment on a $500 million deal? His interpreter would tell him to. <laughs> I don't think he has an interpreter. No? Um, no. Well, 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 it depends if he has a gambling addiction. <laughs> uh, you call that number and you call it not right now, but you call it in two minutes, exactly two minutes from this moment. So at 756, you're going to win those Lakeside Rodeo tickets if you're caller number five. So again, that's 877-767-4760. On the other side, we got to get back into this Padre series against the Dodgers and what's next for them in Milwaukee also. The Masters, if you missed the tournament, we'll fill you in on what's next for Scotty Scheffler, the current reigning number one golfer in the world. All that on the other side, Big Rich, TD, and Fletch. But first, got to talk to you about my dentist, Dr. Jordan Colby, Ocean View Dental. Um, really quick story. I had a tooth that needed to be removed. I needed three implants put in, and I didn't know who to turn to because my dentist, my former dentist, I should say, 
told me that it was going to take 18 months to do this whole procedure. I was going to have to go to four different medical offices and dental offices, and it just sounded like a mess. I didn't know when to start. I didn't know really who to trust. I wanted to get a second opinion. And so I got referred to Dr. Jordan Colby over at Ocean View Dental, and this was a game changer for me. I, I, I got all the work done in his office. It only took three months. You heard me right. I was told that this was going to be four separate dentist office visits. It only took me one dental office to get this done. It was at Dr. Jordan Colby's up at Ocean View Dental in Oceanside. I was told that this was going to take 18 months. It only took three months. The whole procedure from start to finish with Dr. Jordan Colby. He's the only dentist I'll go to. He's the only dentist my family will go to. Check him out on oceanviewdental.net. Um, again, if you're due for your um, something major or something minor, just a teeth cleaning appointment, they do it all at Ocean View Dental. Uh, got a great location in Fallbrook as well. So if that's closer to you, check them out at oceanviewdental.net.
This update is presented by Taco Bell. Starting off with the Padres, they won two out of three in L.A. over the weekend. Last night, Jerkson Profar saving the day late when he had a bases loaded double that took the 6-3 lead for the Padres, which is how the score would finish. Padres now heading to Milwaukee for a three-game series against the Brewers in a haunted hotel. In golf, Scotty Scheffler wins the Masters by four strokes, finishing at 11 under par. And in the NBA, play-in tournament actually gets going tomorrow with the Lakers and the Pelicans and the Warriors and the Kings. Taco Bell is introducing the new Cantina Chicken menu with a new Cantina Chicken Burrito, Quesadilla, Bowl, and Tacos featuring their new slow-roasted chicken. Try the new Cantina Chicken menu today at participating U.S. Taco Bell locations while supplies last contact store for participation, which varies. What a busy sports weekend it was. Hello and welcome in. Good morning and happy Monday to those who celebrate. Big Rich, TD, and Fletch with you. Yeah, so Padres, they get a second winning series over the Dodgers this time. The Masters. Scotty Scheffler walks away with his second green jacket. Max Holloway with a knockout of the century in the UFC. It's just been hit after hit after hit rolling in with there's so much to get to it was a busy busy and then plus the nba is on fire right now as they're wrapping up their regular season we're getting head headlong well, toward the playing rounds it yeah. might be about to catch fire well no urgency down the stretch of the regular season is interesting because seeding does matter the lakers have an insanely important game against the pelicans coming up tomorrow night we're going to air that here on san diego sports 760. the problem with the nba is the very, very end of the regular season feels urgent. The very, very beginning of the playoffs with the playing tournament feels urgent. And then after that, mm -hmm. nothing really feels urgent until the conference finals. You see the Pacers put up 157 points. 157. No, I did not. See 157 that. against uh, Atlanta. 157 to 115. Oh my god! Don't worry, your halftime's coming. Yeah, I feel it, dude. That yeah. is that's a that's a lot. It's like an all star game score. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh my god! So I hope you took the over on that one. <laughs> the point total went over. I can promise you that. Jeez, incredible. Um, yeah, and how about the Padres this weekend? The offense is here. I'm curious if it's here to stay because. The bats, they've been working this season. That's the biggest takeaway I have over these past two series is the Padres very different from last year. When they need runs, it seems like they can score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it really does. Uh, and it's it's nice to see the one of the complaints we had last year is, hey, we need these guys that have these major stats on baseball cards just to play up to those stats. And that's happening. This season, I mean, it is happening. Manny Machado looks good out there on the on the you know base running, hitting the ball. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. is looks like Fernando of old. He's electric. Jackson Merrill, who expectations were, I would say, low, is doing fantastic. I mean, it's not like he's blowing the doors off of this thing, but he's having a rookie of the year season so far, batting three thirty three. Uh, I mean, I think he's got eleven strikeouts on the year. I, I mean, come on, the guy looks great. And you're getting uh, support from players that weren't doing any supporting last year. Like uh, Jake Cronenworth has started off incredibly this season. Jerks and Profar, who wasn't with the club a year ago, who was brought back in to be one of the culture pieces, right? He's Fernando Tatis Jr.'s best friend. He's a great clubhouse guy. Well, he's also hitting the cover off the ball right now. Comes up huge over the weekend against the Dodgers with an emotional and an awesome uh, bases clearing double to win the game yesterday. It's like you're getting the production from places that you weren't necessarily counting on it from. And that's something you could never say about last year's team. Well, what's crazy is he's not just a culture piece. I mean, like you sign a guy for the clubhouse culture. If, you know, he's just like, I don't know, like a, a bench guy who yeah. you can run on a utility guy. I mean, they needed a starting outfielder. And so they ran out of options and basically had to give him a million bucks to play the position. And like you said, he is having... But they need to rely on him. Like he's a corner outfielder for Can he out stay yeah. doing this. Like yeah. it's a fun start to the season. It's absolutely incredible what they've done so far. 
they're still 500 team. Like it, it needs to get better from here. It, it can't get worse. And so you go on the road now to Milwaukee where who they've had a hell of a start to the year. They're 10 and four. You're going into their place. Can you keep this positive momentum rolling? And can you get to the point where you're the team that's all of a sudden four or five games above 500 as we hit the dog days of summer? And can you keep growing on that? Cause that's what it's going to take. Uh, you know, when you said Profar was Nando's best friend, I thought, how much better would Nando play if Kevin AC was his best friend? But Kevin AC can't be his best friend because Kevin AC is our best friend. So he's already taken up in the best friend market. That's a good point. Solid right. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Should he, we get him one of those necklaces? Those like beef fry, like heart? Or very least one of those Taylor Swift uh, bracelets oh, we, I was should thinking. We, should we does Kevin get half a heart and then we get three parts of a half of a yeah, heart? Yeah, we'll just cut it up. We just, yeah, yeah, we just uh, like I'll get the thumb. Maybe you, you, TD will get the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll get the pointer finger. It's right. Yeah. Uh, should we make him a friendship bracelet? Yeah, we probably should. Um, <laughs> Kevin AC, uh, who was covering this team, got some interesting quotes from all these players, many of which were talking about how relevant uh, Profar was, especially after the comments that Will Smith made after S Saturday's game. So if you missed it, basically what happened was Stone was on the mound for the Dodgers. He throws one high and tight at Profar. Profar didn't like it. He was throwing a perfect game, by the way, at the time. Profar was turned to bunt, yeah. and it came in high and tight. And that's just a vulnerable spot for a batter to be in. And if you catch one to the nose, it would literally be to the nose. He was pissed, and... I took ex exception. The Dodgers seemed pretty like miffed by this. They were like, okay, like this seems like something that's pretty routine, but whatever. Like as if suggesting like we wouldn't throw at you, buddy. Like we're not all that worried about you. And so all of a sudden Dodgers players, Padres players started barking. The dugouts cleared, no punches thrown, nobody ejected. It just was one of those scuttlebutts that had to be cleared up. And then the game went on afterward. Will Smith made a comment saying like, yeah, I, I don't think we were necessarily throwing at Profar. Like it's kind of irrelevant. And then Profar goes out in game three of the series on Sunday yesterday. And he hits a three run double that bounces off the wall, clears the bases uh, and plays hero in the game that they won. And inevitably that's the storyline. Now all the players are calling him Mr. Relevant. I think Manny Machado was the first to say it, which is kind of cool. So now they have a little bit of a rallying cry around Profar, who's off to a hot start. They head on the road. They're looking for their third straight season series win of the season against Milwaukee. A lot of positive momentum. They do have to stay in a haunted hotel, though. And we've had stories <laughs> from Adrian Beltre, who talked about banging on the headboards. Well, maybe that was just the guy in the room next door yeah. getting it on. Who knows? <laughs> Never know. Uh, there was a different player. I can't remember. Damn, I lost the article. It's like I but, heard a lot of moaning. Yeah. He was it sounded ghoulish. And then there was headboards banging. It's like, well, uh, you know, yeah. Adrian, uh, I, I'm going to tell you a little story. It's about the birds and the bees. <laughs> There's another player who claims he actually saw Mr. Fister. It's the Fister Hotel. PF. God, that'd be scary. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of innuendo yeah. built into this. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it. I'm trying yeah. to avoid it. I'm just reading the facts. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> now TD is the only person who's had ghost experience, but you've always had positive ghost experiences, yeah. right? Well, I mean, it's, it's not like anybody's tried to kill me. But and look, I'm not saying that I actually lived with ghosts, but I mean, there's a strong possibility. There are some unanswered questions that happen. That's well, all I'm saying. So players at this hotel have talked about their iPods turning on randomly without mm -hmm. them doing anything. I had a computer that did that. Light switches, TVs, yeah. same thing. Wait a second. So this is at the, the the house you guys sold before you bought this new one. Yeah. Yeah. You you guys had all sorts of issues happen, like your computer turning on. What else? So because there I remember was, you there telling was the two story. people that died in this home. Inside the house. Inside the house. Now, At the same time? No. Natural causes. Uh, uh, they were husband and wife. All died of old age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Do you know what room they died in? Yes. Was it like where you and Sarah slept? One of them, yes. And the other one was Caleb, <laughs> yes. for sure. No, because... the other one was like a guest room. It was actually my oldest son's room until uh -huh. he left. And then it became like the guest room. Did he leave because of the ghosts? Yeah, <laughs> he did. He, he, was, he was 14 years old and he's like, <laughs> I can't take it anymore. So he got out and we were like, that's fine. But uh, so we had a computer. Actually, the computer was in our bedroom at the time. Yeah. We had a desk in there and it would just turn on in the middle of the night. And we actually went and turned it like so it wasn't just asleep and then would turn on. We actually would power it off, like shut down. Yeah. And it would pink turn on. And so I had to take it to Apple several times where they said, we don't know why it's turning on. We can look at the history and it just says 
the power came on. There's no reason why. It doesn't say that you press the power button. It doesn't say you moved a mouse. It just says it came on. Ghosts. And so, and it would come on like six, seven times a night. And so, I mean, I would literally have to unplug it so it wouldn't turn on. I actually had it unplugged one time and then the printer started going off uh. in the middle of the night. Yeah. So it was very odd. And then we had uh, smoke alarms that would just go off. It was always in the middle of the night. It was never like they went off at two o'clock in the afternoon. It would when be 2 a.m. The layer between our world and their world is at its Correct. Thinnest. When yeah. the vortex uh, is, starts to open up and I guess they decide we should set off smoke detectors. But I mentioned something to <laughs> the former well, maybe, owner. Maybe like the ghosts create smoke. Like they're like, what? <laughs> and then right. all of a sudden it's like, what? <laughs> like so yeah. so it uh -huh. turns out that one of the individuals who passed away was a smoker no way. so <laughs> don't oh know what that God. means but i mean like i would literally have to go i i replace smoke detectors constantly did you go and out they would just like go off the living room you'd be like yeah marble red yeah, that's right i smoke newport is that a soft Damn it, pack? jeff yeah i, I <laughs> I told smoke. you to smoke on I the smoke port. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not a par parliament. That couldn't <laughs> possibly be Sarah. <laughs> Virginia Slim. Barbara. <laughs> Dude, that's cool, man. I wish I had ghosts. Yeah, Dude, well, that, well, let me ask it. So, so do you now, as a result of those experiences, believe in ghosts like one hundred percent? Uh, no. Uh, but if I bet if you ask Sarah, she would say something different. But yeah. she, uh, she said she saw some things. So, and actually my brother said he saw something as well in our, he was sitting in our living room and like, he got real quiet and I had said something to him and he's like, there's nobody else here, right? Like, no. It's like, wait, just, this is Wayne? Yeah. He's Wayne like, Dale? Wayne Dale, Wayne Dale was like, somebody just walked down your hallway. And I'm no. like, yeah, I'm telling you, no, I promise. And so, Dude, so yeah. Wayne swore to he, it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did oh, you yeah. guys go like search the house? Yeah. Like, well, I, well, we got up and looked down the hallway. I'm like, mm, crazy. I don't know. Nothing nothing here yeah but he was like no dude there was like there was some someone who just came around the corner and walked down the hallway so oh my yeah. gosh oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh did you know. say they move quickly or was it like yeah, it was like know. some guy walking Jesus. yeah, right, said, I, yeah. we need stories from the padres after this weekend yeah i want <laughs> i want to hear about hauntings over out in the milwaukee right. fister hotel i hope they're like ghostbusters you remember the scene where like <laughs> Can you imagine Ray, his pants start getting unbuckled? Machado, they, they like he gets his luggage checked at security <laughs> on their way out, and they're like, "Why do you have a toaster oven? That's not a toaster oven. That's a that's a ghost catcher. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a tra it's a ghost trap. <laughs> I just hit this little foot pad. It opens up, and that's how I caught Slimer. <laughs> that worked for me, dude. This is awesome. Yeah, we we should try to get a hold of someone Wait, from the so, Fister Hotel. Now, when you would go to Green Bay, I guess it's not even close to where this is. So no. you guys wouldn't have stayed in this because no, I no. know teams that are playing against the Bucks and teams that are playing against the Brewers, they have to stay in this hotel because it's the only one big enough to fit a team. Yeah, Green Bay, Wisconsin. We stayed actually. That's when when we, we would go out to play the Packers. Stay I, in our cars. I, yeah, yeah, we stayed on the bus. Uh, I only played the Packers one time at Lambeau. And when you're in Green Bay, you stay at this crummy hotel somewhere in the one main road in Green Bay. Probably the same reason. It's the only hotel big enough to fit a team. 100%. And everybody stays there. And, like, all the townspeople know that another football team's coming. Everybody's super sweet. Like, the, the town folk in Green Bay, Wisconsin, couldn't be nicer. The, the hotel couldn't be more accommodating. But it's the type of hotel where, like, the food, it's like, and this is our finest boiled chicken. And you're just like... <laughs> Thank you. Gross. <laughs> very delicious. Thank you so much. And for real, please tell me they really had boiled chicken. Dude, it was <laughs> awful. It was awful. The food was awful. I like how they're like, like, it's it's misery to live here because of the cold. So we'll just make it even more miserable. <laughs> yeah. The food will be terrible too. I'm actually going to Milwaukee this summer, so I'll try to go by the Fister Hotel and see if I can get any stories. Dude, 100 percent You gotta go. Maybe Kendall and I'll stay there one night. Wait, what are you going to Milwaukee for? That's where Kendall's family is. Oh, so I'm going wow. to see all the grandparents and aunts and uncles who I've never met. Are they Green Bay fans? They are diehard Packers fans, wow. so they hate their team. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Do they know you're a Niners fan? Yeah, they do. And they're okay with it? I mean, I've gotten along with them all so far. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Right. Until you go out there That's wearing the yeah, 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 yeah. He's wearing his Trey what? Lance jersey. <laughs> What's so funny about Packers fans, and I, I think I've met enough of them now to know this, like my father-in-law literally owns part of the team because they do that thing where you oh, can yeah, buy yeah, in yeah, because yeah. they don't have an actual owner. Like a share. So my father-in-law is a diehard Packers fan. He hates the Packers. 
Good. so much. Good. I don't get it about Packers. Well, fans. it's like uh, Cleveland Browns fans. <laughs> they just hate they their love, team. Yeah. Well, because they. Well, yeah. The Packers, though. Well, I guess they've been kind of let downs yeah. until now. Jordan Love, baby. J Love. J Love. <laughs> J Love. Well, the Padres battled back after being down early to win in 11 innings on Friday. Then they took Saturday off. Then they win again on <laughs> Sunday, 6-3, to three, winning the series in L.A., 2-1. to one. Manny hit a couple homers. Nando was the hero on Friday night. The Padres are 500 on the season. Now, guys, you'd have to go all the way back to March 29th to see a 500 record for these Padres. Good point. Yeah, here we go. Wait, huh? like March 29th this year? That's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they tied with the Dodgers. I mean, they've yeah. only played 18 games. That's right. That's correct, yes, yeah. But, I mean, I feel like the trend is our friend. We're trending upwards. This is it. We, I mean, only nine losses on the season? I'm fine with that. Scotty Scheffler won the Masters, didn't have to worry about deciding whether to destroy his marriage and any future relationship with his child by choosing to play a game he calls work <laughs> or withdraw from the tournament and witness the moment of a life he helped create enter into this world because his wife did not go into labor, which makes me now question if she was even really pregnant or if she was just telling Scotty that as a way to make him play a little faster and get home sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain works funny. Well, it happens in the NBA, uh, all the scores around the NBA, and there was a lot of them. The Pacers, Ethan, the Hawks, 157, 115, the Celtics, Ethan Hawk, <laughs> Mission Impossible, the Celtics, Cheese Wizards, 132, 122, the Heat had Toronto Gift Raptors, 118, 103, <laughs> the Knicks Triple Word scores, the Scrabbles, 120, 119. Wait, who are they playing against? The Bulls? Scrabbles. Got yeah, that's, it. Correct. that's correct. Uh, the Hornets ordered a cup of decavs, 120, 110. The Magic ordered pancakes, you know, buttermilk walkie, 113, 88. <laughs> 76ers babbling Brooklyn, 107, 86. <laughs> that's a repeat. The, oh, is it? I don't remember. I called them New Jersey for three quarters of the season. Uh, the Nuggets, it's raining Memphis, 126-111. The Kings stamped their past Portland, 121-82. The Warriors' personality is their greatest attribute, huh? 123-116. Oklahoma, comma, maxed the Mavs, 135-86. Mm -hmm. okay. A little master's choke Max there. Homer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Max uh, the Spurs, Aikman, Detroit, 123-95. The Sons of Anarchy, the Timberwolves, 125-106. The Rock Hetsonade Mixer, the Clippers, 118-105. And the Lakers, if you be my bodyguard, I can be your long-lost Pelicans, 124-108. <laughs> there were some stretches. <laughs> Solid. The Detroit ones, you, I feel like you can't do the middle of a word as Troy Aikman. So did well, Troy. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one that Rich and I both completely missed. It was just like two ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Rockettes, maybe? Uh, yeah, the Rock KitchenAid Mixer. You don't have a KitchenAid Mixer in your house? KitchenAid oh. Mixer. Come on. Oh, catch up, guys. Yeah. yeah sorry, that's our fault. <laughs> no, you know, honestly, that is our fault. That's our bad. Holy cow. <laughs> So 15 so, games yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it was. It was. And that's the that's the last time you have a bunch of games. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Play and start tomorrow. Whoa. I cannot wait. That's a can't wait. Are there no games today? No games today. Play and tournament begins tomorrow. Uh, Lakers and God. the Warriors have their games back to back. Almost feels like a night off. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Those take me a minute. I'm oh, going to tell you. Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, from now on, the max you will have is like two games a night. I like that. Maybe three once you get to the first. Easy, round. easy. Uh, <laughs> those will be borderline. I don't know. Sexual references that you'll have to dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So check this out. Mm -hmm. Eagles extended Devonte Smith through the 2028 season. Uh, signed a deal worth. Wow was worth 75 million 51 million dollars guaranteed so the eagles see in year entering year three 
God, that's early. Uh, yeah, I think that's accurate. So <clears throat> wow. now Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco. I don't know if you guys have seen. He's now unfollowed the team. He wants his new contract. This is going to add fuel to the fire because Ayuk has one more year of service than Devontae Smith had. Yeah. Huh. Damn yeah. you, Eagles. Well, let me double You're not check supposed to do this. Case. I think he's only played two seasons, but I, I don't know. I, I mean, think so. I'm almost positive, in fact, he's only been with the team two years. Is it time for the 49ers to say goodbye to Ayuk? I don't think so. I, there's so many guys on the no, team I would rather. Three. Devontae he's Smith. played a full three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did him and Ayuk come into the league at the same time? 2021? Hmm. Yeah, I think Ayuk and him were the same draft class. So... Hmm. Yeah, he and look, I mean, now that I'm looking at his statistics, no, Ayuk was the year before he was 2020 round one, pick Jeez, 25. So Ayuk just has way more fuel to the fire now. I mm -hmm. feel like Ayuk might be getting a little bit rotten there in San Francisco. And I think he just wants money. Debo and, Samuel did this exact same thing a few years ago. The Niners ended up caving and giving him the money. I think they need to do the same thing with Ayuk. There's not a whole lot of Brandon Ayuk's out there in the world, San Here's Francisco. So Devontae Smith gets his contract. But remember, you've had some retirements already. You're you're making room for well, I should say that that you're not making room. Players are making the decision for you that makes room for salary to flood in on important players that need extensions. With the 49ers, they almost have the reverse problem. You know, looming in the very near distance is Brock Purdy's contract. Mm -hmm. If he plays at a Pro Bowl level once again this upcoming season, you have no choice but to extend this guy to a massive deal. And so they're looking at it from the standpoint, well, can we win without Ayuk, still have the, the level of talent and success that we've had with him? And I'm sure they're trying to find a number that they're that satisfies all that while knowing that they still have enough on the vine to hand over to Brock Purdy when that contract comes up. Brandon Ayuk is a number one wide receiver in the NFL. He was the number one option for Brock Purdy a year ago. As a 49er fan, I would rather move on from Debo Samuel than Brandon Ayuk. Mm. And mm. I, I've thought about that statement a lot recently, and I, I feel comfortable <laughs> saying it out loud. Choosing my words carefully. This is the first time I've vocalized it. This is the first time I've said it out loud, but I've thought it a lot. Like, I would be okay with trying to move Debo for a couple of draft picks and signing Ayuk long term because Brandon Ayuk offers something that Debo Samuel does not. Brandon Ayuk can actually run routes. And with Brock Purdy as the quarterback, you need to help him out like that, where Debo Samuel is great once he has the ball in his hands. But this year, he struggled getting open at times. So I think you got to do whatever you can to keep Ayuk. Mm. Hmm. Ayuk. Well, I mean, Ayuk. Ayuk is on fire. They the 49ers need to do something quick because they're going to run out of cash here coming up. In the well, next, they're already paying years. Bosa. They're already paying McCaffrey. They're already paying Debo. They're already paying Kittle. They're already paying yeah Trent Williams. Well, so, to your point, I mean, with an aging wide receiver like a Debo Samuel, who you're paying what twenty eight million dollars a year to be, be both a wide receiver and a running back, trade him like the chargers traded Keenan Allen, you know, he was on that big extension and they asked him to take a pay cut and he was like, nah. So they're like, all right, well, we're going to ship you off to Chicago. You <laughs> can go play with Caleb Williams. Especially there's teams out there that want Debo. Like Baltimore talked about it earlier this off season. They want Debo and they'll probably give you a second round pick or maybe even more to get him. Well, check this out. Um, I was looking at a Niners blog that I think was this article was written by Ben Fletcher. But I haven't gotten into blogging yet. <laughs> they said trade him to the Ravens for likely. They're saying so get the young tight end who had the breakout season last I'd be year. Okay with that. Maybe a pick. Who knows? I, I don't know what else you could get. I think you got to move him, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you have to. I think you have to show your priorities are with the youth on this team. And I know that's messed up. And Debo's done a lot of great for the organization. But Debo's also been a pain in the ass at times. And he can't get open. Well, I mean, it, look, you may, you may be right. You may be forced into a situation where one of these guys probably has to go. Yeah. I don't see a situation where you can afford Debo, Ayuk, and the talent they have on defense and some of the paychecks they have on the defensive side and sign Brock Purdy to an extension, which, again, is looming in the very near future. And health and production both favor Ayuk at this point. So I, I'm sorry we derailed this from Devontae Smith. Congratulations to him. But the Eagles are in a much different situation right now than the 49ers are. The 49ers still have that Super Bowl window open. You got to think about who is going to best help you get there. And right now it's Brandon Ayuk. Well, mm -hmm. so are the Eagles. And that's <laughs> the reason why they're doing what they're doing. Is the Super Bowl window for the Eagles open? Well, I mean, if you if you believe in Jalen Hurts, if you believe that 
Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are the type of receivers who it just can... It kind of felt like two years ago it was wide open, and they almost did it. Like Jalen Hurts outperformed Patrick Mahomes in that Super Bowl. Last year, they were a disaster. Well, they were a disaster down the stretch of the season. They started 10-1. and one, You know, so I look, I hope isn't lost for the Eagles. And, and then I'm lost sure. six straight. Yes, they lost six straight. Well, seven, including the loss to Tampa Bay. And I'm not saying that it was a pretty finish to the season. I'm saying that the Eagles, in their opinion, the window's open. And they have a young quarterback who I'm sure they still believe in. Now, the question is, after this season, what happens if this all doesn't work out for Nick Sirianni? I think they blow it up. And yeah, your main leader uh, on offense, Jason Kelsey, is retired. Yeah, yeah. He announced his retirement, which, by the way, gives you an opportunity to sign a guy like Devontae Smith because that salary comes off the books. Yeah. Uh, before you get to that uh, thought there about Ronald McDonald, Rich, uh, the bulls, the blood, the dust, the mud, the roar of a Sunday crowd, the white in his knuckles, and the gold in his buckles to win the next go-round. I'm talking about rodeo, guys. Yeah, you're damn right. You're yeah, right. Lakeside Rodeo. It's coming up uh, April 25th or the 28th at the Lakeside Rodeo ground. What do you want to do? 829? I think we already gave those tickets away. We did? <laughs> yeah. When yeah, was I like, here? Yes, you were. Yeah, you were right there. <laughs> You're probably looking at Courtney Kardashian's breast milk. No, I was probably looking at these Jets uniforms that are look exactly the same as their other uniforms. Oh, I tell you what, we could do. We could do some Strike Force tickets. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yep. Of course. Yeah. The guts, same thing. It's kind of like the rodeo and the butts. Yeah. <laughs> Strike force. Strike force. I love how That's like the... excited you were to give away those tickets was, that we already gave I, away. I, listen, I'm telling you, I don't remember if we gave those away at all. <laughs> like, not at all. So <laughs> apparently I was not paying attention. Uh, so we'll still do it. 829, you want some Strike Force tickets. Color number right. five. You're going to get them. Eight, seven. Oh, yeah, I remember giving the, the number away now. 877-767-4760. <laughs> Anyways, Ronald McDonald House. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's actually um, an awesome cause that you can support here in San Diego. During my time playing with the Chargers, uh, many times went over to the Ronald McDonald House, hung with some of the families who had – uh, a kid across the street in the hospital. Um, if you've ever been in a situation where your child has to go to a children's hospital, and recently we have a close friend who has experienced all of this, it can be terrifying, especially if you don't live in the city where your child is receiving treatment, you know, because all of a sudden you're completely taken out of your comfort zone. And the San Diego Giving Back Raffle is a great way to give back to this important community resource. While gaining a chance to win one of thousands of prizes, you could support our Ronald McDonald House and you could win a multi-million dollar historic home right across the street from magnificent Balboa Park in San Diego. Uh, give back and you can gain even more. It's a true win-win for you and your family and for this great organization that benefits all the families they serve. So 2024 marks the 20th anniversary of the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, benefiting Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. This year's edition features more than 2,000 great prizes, including 20 vacations, 20 vehicle options, 20 days of 20,000 prizes, or I should say $20,000 prizes, uh, all this summer leading up to awarding the biggest prizes on July 25th. Uh, every raffle supporter is guaranteed to win a prize in the grand prize drawing. So the raffle fundraisers have helped throughout the years build our San Diego home. And in return, the San Diego Ronald McDonald House has awarded more than $30 million. That's $30 million in prizes to participants. So if you want to give back, this is a great way to do it. The San Diego Giving Back Raffle helps support the Ronald McDonald House right here in San Diego. That's the San Diego Giving Back Raffle.
This update is presented by Taco Bell. We will start off with the Padres. They won two out of three in L.A. over the weekend. Last night, Jerkson Profar was the hero, giving the Padres a 6-3 lead with a bases loaded double. Bullpen held, and Padres won the finale 6-3. Now they're heading to Milwaukee. They got three games against the Brewers in golf. Scotty Scheffler won the Masters by four strokes, finishing at 11 under par. And in the NBA, the play-in tournament begins tomorrow. Taco Bell is introducing the new Cantina Chicken menu with a new Cantina Chicken Burrito, Quesadilla, Bowl, and Tacos. Featuring their new slow roasted chicken, try the new Cantina chicken menu today at participating U.S. Taco Bell locations. While supplies last, contact store for participation, which varies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Big Rich TD and Fletch, San Diego Sports 760. Uh, we got a thousand bucks that we're giving away here. You got multiple chances to win. What are we calling this one? Bonus bucks. Bonus bucks. So what you do is you listen for a keyword. As soon as you hear the keyword, go over to sportssd.com, enter that keyword for your shot at a grand. But you got to keep it locked in here. San Diego Sports 760 all day long. Love that. Love that mm. money. Mm. Um. Okay. So we had Masters Week. The buildup, I feel like, was probably better than the tournament. Uh, I love Augusta national. I love the pomp and circumstance to the masters. I love all the stories you hear about, you know, this year they unveiled the cocktail recipe for the azalea, the lemonade vodka cocktail libation that is so famous out there with the grenadine. There was, there was a lot of fun. Did you guys try to make one? I, I didn't. Did you? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I bought all the stuff so I can make it in here on Friday, but then I forgot it. So I just made myself one on Saturday. Was it awesome? I mean, it's, yeah, I mean it's fine. It's Fuck like a, it's like a, yeah, strawberry lemonade. Yeah, I would say <laughs> cherry lemonade. I guess. Yeah, yeah, Rich, yeah. to your point, it sucks when you already know who the winner is by like the twelfth hole on Sunday. <sighs> yeah. So this year, the most exciting part of the Masters to me was Saturday. Like late in the round, Saturday when you had the leaderboard really bunched up, and it seemed like going into Sunday, it could have been Scotty, Morikawa, Max Homa. Like you didn't know who was gonna win. DeChambeau for a while, and yeah. then he fell off on Saturday. And then Sunday happened, and a lot of guys just kind of fell. And the conditions were okay on Sunday. That was the most disappointing part. It felt like everybody could score, but a lot of guys, the pressure got to them. That's what it seemed like to me. And Max Homa, Colin Morikawa, they all fell off. <laughs> And Scotty walked away with it, which that's his second Masters win. He was incredible. He was masterful, especially on the back nine. But it sucks when there's no sort of tension at the end of Masters Sunday. I completely agree with you. It changes the feel of the tournament. It uh, it obviously makes Sunday less memorable, especially since that's a tournament that in years past has given us all such thrills and great memories to walk away from. And namely Tiger Woods has been that guy, whether he's smashing records, breaking course records, breaking PJ tour records and majors. And some of these performances when he was a younger golfer were just insane. Or as he aged some of the heroics, especially round four heroics that we've seen as recently as 2019. In 2019, there was three people who were tied for second place, one stroke behind mm -hmm. Tiger. It was unbelievable. Who was just holding them off all day. Now, there were times in Tiger's career where he blew out the field at the Masters. Oh, yeah. Uh, there were times where he was the only person under par well, at that, the Masters. That's what I'm saying. Like, there were times where, you know, he was doing things. He was operating at a level that the rest of the field just could not operate at. And that was fun to watch as well, even though it wasn't much of wasn't much of a tournament but it, it was tiger it was tiger yeah it was tiger it was like watching michael jordan here's the difference tiger is old and he looks it tiger's hurt and he's playing like it tiger went to the masters and the goal was to make the cut and he did it because after he made the cut the wheels came off yeah so yeah. he makes his 24th consecutive cut at augusta that is the longest streak of cu consecutive cuts made uh, at the Masters. So he has that record and it doesn't look like anybody's going to come close to beating them. Um, but the reality is the trade-off is Saturday completely fell apart. He went 10 over par. Sunday was much better. And that's kind of all she wrote. And it may be all she wrote for Tiger Woods at the Masters altogether, which slams the door shut on an era because he said it himself many times. The only tournaments he's going to play in are tournaments that he believes he has a chance to win. And if he doesn't improve much from a standpoint of his body healing mm -hmm. and, you know, his golf game improving as a result of healing, I don't I don't think he's going to subject himself to just being another participant in the Masters. It'd be tough to see him go out like that 
Uh, that was 15 over par is what he finished at. That's the furthest away from par he's ever been in a major championship. It, it would be tough for him to go out like that. I expect another bite at the apple. What other tournaments would he have a chance to win? The Masters truly feels like, in terms of majors. That's what I feel like. It feels like the best chance, and here's why. It's not known for being like this brutally long course where you, you have to be long off the tee box or have to be... Well, you, you, in the back nine, you have to kind of be perfect where where you place the 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 golf ball. Now, the course is difficult to wor- walk because of all the hills. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. you know, it's high, low. It's high, low. It's you know, it's all over the place. And a lot of the the shots you take, like we were talking about last week, leading into the tournament, you know, th- you're taking them from different angles and different platforms. But the problem is, it's a shorter course, and so that probably suits his game better now. So I and don't it's know. a knowledgeable course. Like yeah. if you know the right. course, your chances improve because it's all about your second shot. Check this out: June twenty first, we're playing in that tournament, right? Right. Yeah. So I mean, Tiger Woods probably not going to play any tournaments real soon. Yeah. Would you rather have Paige Sporanic or Tiger Woods? Paige Sporanic. <laughs> not yeah. even close. Okay. It's Tiger. Are you oh, sure? Oh, wait. Yes. Interesting. Really? For me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're not doing this. For you. We're doing this for the kids. I was just saying, or that, whatever I mean, Jesse Lozano's tournament. Uh, of, yeah, pro, yeah, whatever proceeds whatever, go to. Yeah, but what if we could get? What if we could get else. both? Okay, all okay. of a sudden we're stacking a team here. Am I wrong? I want to win this thing. If we had Tiger and Paige, we would win. I promise. <laughs> we would do okay. I think we would do okay. Uh, that means two of us are out. That means the golf only gets better. Well, I will say this. I honestly feel at this point there may be a better chance of Tiger golfing with us than seeing him in another Masters. <laughs> right, right. And that makes me sad because obviously yeah. it's been such an incredible run watching Tiger Woods at these majors. But it's, it's what if com- completely different. Now. What if you just got Tiger some testosterone? Gosh, oh wow! Now you're talking. Things could change. Okay, hang yeah, because I mean, like when you look at Tiger, it doesn't look like he has any. Pump the brakes! All of a sudden, you guys figured it out. <laughs> what we need to do, Fletch, get Tiger on the phone. We need to talk to him about the man zone at Golden <laughs> Triangle Plastic Excuse Surgery. Excuse me, operator. I need Eldrick Woods. <laughs> That's right, Doctor Roy David, the medical director, double board certified plastic surgeon at Golden Triangle Plastic Surgery. He opened the man zone, and he opened it. For people just like Tiger Woods, let me tell you something. If he if he got his T levels right before the Masters, maybe this <laughs> yeah. could have been something. Right, Although right. He does look like he's been doing a lot of push-ups lately. <laughs> yeah, that's a Eldrick lot. Taunt Woods, the guy who looks like a <laughs> tank from the waist up. And frankly, so do I now. I can do over a thousand push-ups in tank. thirty minutes. Tank from the waist down. That's a lie, but I can do a lot. And <laughs> frankly, it's like a gun turn. <laughs> It's because of Golden Triangle Plastic Surgery, the man zone. The man zone got my T levels right, went in there. I actually didn't even realize my T levels would be low. I went in there. I felt tired. I felt sluggish. I felt like I needed a boost of energy. So I was drinking a ton of coffee. I was doing all the things that you do when you're feeling kind of uh, sluggish. You know, I was turning on maybe ESPN and watching some of <laughs> No, I'm kidding. But I, I was just, you know, I mean, I was I was struggling with my energy levels. I go into the man zone, and to be perfectly honest with you, Dr. Roy David said to me, he's like, I don't think you're going to be a candidate. I'm like, well, it's good to just check, right? You know, I mean, that's the whole purpose of this. Let's check the T levels. Let's make sure they're all in shape, and then we'll go off to the races from there. And sure enough, I was in the low 300 range, which is outside of – the, the normal range for men my age. So we got boosted back up and now I'm feeling great. And, and that's as simple as it is. All you got to do is go to the manzone.com, schedule your first appointment. You shouldn't be ashamed of this at all. This is something that every man experiences ages 40s, 50s, and 60s, especially you losing testosterone by the day. So you may as well do something about it and optimize your male health at the man zone. So check them out again. The website is the manzone.com. That's the man zone. Dot com.
Rich here for sdfatloss.com. That's sdfatloss.com. You you're... look hot. Thank you, dude. I mean, thank you. All my bros have been telling me how hot I look lately, and it's just <laughs> thank you. I mean, it's I barely get through sentences anymore without hearing about, I don't know, like my my waistline shrinking, biceps mm -hmm. looking a little bit mm -hmm. more buff, the del mm -hmm. deltoids are popping. All of a sudden, people are talking about my pectorals. And we can't keep our hands off you. Thank you. But, I Thank mean, you. I mean, more oil, more oil. Yeah, it's just so much oil. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's just, I'm so slippery. <laughs> Anyways, look, scfatloss.com. Uh, if you're looking all thanks to Wayne and Chloe. Yeah, all thanks to Wayne and Chloe. <laughs> I've got all of my bros just oiling me up constantly. It's so, so crazy. Um, <laughs> scfatloss.com it really works we were super duper fat like mm -hmm. i mean unfathomably overweight some would say unhealthy yeah mm. yeah yeah yeah. you can make yeah. that argument in fact if you looked at the obesity chart yeah i wasn't even on it nope we were <laughs> off the charts mm -hmm. not in a good way either uh-uh not good not mm -mm. good at all mm -mm. in fact Wayne and chloe got their hands on us for the first time not literally but figuratively yeah uh look it, it and much to their chagrin they were like yeah we don't even know if you're candidates you're gonna have to lose 10 pounds before we even trust you yeah that was basically it yeah and so we're like oh Okay. And they were like, well, look, the truth is, if you stick to our plan, this will work for you. We stuck to the plan. And within four days, we all got on the group text and we we're like, hey, did you guys already lose 10 pounds? And the answer was yes. <laughs> Surprisingly, this works for even idiots like us. So if you're looking to lose weight and looking to do it, frankly, the easiest way I've ever lost weight with SDFatLoss.com, the natural way, you're not counting points, you're not taking any gross shakes. Uh, this isn't a situation where they set you up on a meal plan where your meals are delivered to the doors. You're not counting calories. You're not really exercising. All this is is just sticking and committing to a plan that truly works and changing your lifestyle. First, you lose all the weight. Then you maintain the weight loss. It's that simple. So if you want to do it the natural way, go to sdfatloss.com. Get in touch with Wayne and Chloe, our weight loss team, soon to be your weight loss team. Mention the show. You're going to save 200 bucks on your subscription. I can't express to you how much of a game changer this has been for the three of us. We wish the same for you. And we've heard from many of our listeners uh, via direct messages and, uh, and, and even running into them at some of the events we've done recently that they've had success with this program too. And that's what we're hoping for everybody. So sdfatloss.com, check them out at sdfatloss.com. Big Rich TD and Fletch taking our final lap here. Um, if you missed the show, you could check us out on the free iHeartRadio app. We put up the podcast just minutes after we wrap up here. If you miss anything, including our Masters recap, Padres weekend recap, as they're getting ready for their Milwaukee visit, uh, UFC 300. Or even Juju Smith Schuster's man parts. That's, it's all available it's all on the there. free iHeartRadio app. <laughs> um, bottom of the barrel. Yeah. I don't know who did the study, but there was a study done, and they found that most people, the majority of people who they surveyed, want to sleep with robots. Quick survey right now. Hands up if you want to sleep with robots. Do I want to or would I? <laughs> you want to? Like both. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's be very honest. Are these with robots each other. designed to be slept with. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so he showed me the picture of one of these quote unquote robots. Don't yeah. look like a robot to me. 
Hang on. Does it look like Susan Sarandon? Yeah. Dude, I mean, uh, I mean, not, not far not, off. Oh, Martha Stewart. Actually, kind of maybe it's like kind a of, young Martha Stewart. It's kind of your type. To it. I don't know where to get Damn back. Right. I think yeah. Martha's everyone's type. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she's only eighty. Look, wait, look at this. Look at this okay. picture. Okay, this. You're telling. That's a robot. Uh -huh. Yeah. That ain't that's... no Roomba, Chief. <laughs> Where's her legs? That's a Woomba. I think uh, it's just being put together. It's being assembled. <laughs> yeah. <It's> a Woomba. <laughs> All right, we're done. All right, yeah. <laughs> Who do we play today, Fletchy? <laughs> we actually still have a minute. Oh, okay. okay. Well, What's we, the next story? We like to thank Woomba. Uh, 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 the next story. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go to uh, this, uh, this ex-wife that wants, oh, or soon-to-be ex-wife, I guess? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Dudes, I, I don't know what to say for all of us, but um, <laughs> there's a, uh, a, a soccer player, a famous, world-renowned soccer player, now retired, named Kaka. That's, yeah. That was his name. That's, mm -hmm. So anyways, uh, played internationally for years and years and years, retired, has a beautiful wife, and she is filing for a divorce because he's too perfect. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> Her reasons for filing for divorce are he's a great husband, uh -huh. a great man, a great father to our children. Mm -hmm. I think they have two kids. Yep. But he's just so perfect yep. that I can't bear to be with him. <laughs> yeah. Are we doomed or are we set up for success? Well, oh, good point. Yeah. yeah not perfect, I mean, so I think we'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting a divorce for those reasons. I can promise you that. She's never going to be like, judge, here's the problem. <laughs> this guy is so perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Good God. All right. Now, who do we thank? Oh, we thank all the textures, all the roadies, the dogs, the hangers, the bangers. We thank our uh, winners. We had, let's see, Joe and Scott, who Sweet. won tickets today on the show. We thank Rich. We thank TD. Uh, Kevin AC coming up on Wednesday, but tomorrow's Tuesday. Crap. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're going to Haunted Hotel tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be checking in with the Fister Hotel out <laughs> do you there think in Milwaukee. Talk to us about their haunted rooms. They it seems better. like that would I be. Think that's how they want to sell rooms at the hotel. Okay. Say it's haunted. Come stay here and see if you see okay. ghosts. Okay. All right. All right. Coming mm -hmm. up tomorrow. That's what we're going to be getting mm -hmm. into. Pretty mm -hmm. excited about that. Yeah. It's a taco Tuesday. You should make right. tacos. Oh, my gosh. Coming up tomorrow, tacos. Now the herd. We'll see you in a little bit.